But today, for this special upload, because obviously it's WrestleMania 37 season, we're actually giving you the night one and possibly night two towards no other than WrestleMania. So, what's going on? You guys there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. All right, I didn't realize you were there because it's like flashing up stuff on the screen. Oh, I'm here. Right, I'll st- don't worry. I'll start that again. Okay. Hi guys, welcome to the. Hi guys, welcome to this edition of Wrestling Fan Reaction Podcast here exclusively on to no other than Podbean.com, or alternatively, you are listening from Pop Culture Wrestling. All I can say is today we're going to be covering WrestleMania, not Night One, not basically, not just Night One. We're covering both nights. Yes, this could be a long upload, so I do apologise if I'm burning your ears. By now, you're probably bored and switched off, but you never know. But today, I've got three incredible guests with me. I've got no other than Cameron. How's it going, my friend? Uh, hey, Gavin. Uh, thank you again for having me on. It's it's another good time to be on. I'm excited that I'm on doing WrestleMania predictions with you guys uh, today. And I really enjoy. I've really been enjoying myself the last few times I've been on. You've been, uh, you know, really good to me uh, as well. So thanks for having me on again. And uh, my YouTube channel is Wrestling Fan for Life ninety eight, which you can subscribe to after this. And uh, yeah, thank you again, uh, Gavin. You're welcome. And I've got no other than Husky Hero himself, Gary Threat. Hey, everybody, it's the Big Bad Husky Daddy coming from Buffalo, New York, ready to tear this thing down. Let's go. I literally thought that was one of your lovely soundboard effects then. At first, <laughs> I was like, okay, where's he going with this? But I digress. No. And Wait. I've got no other than... <laughs> you would. I've got no other than a special guest that is one of the guys that actually has inspired me towards doing podcasts in the over his duration and I've enjoyed what they've had to offer. It's Brian from UWO Podcast based on Facebook. How's it going, bro? I'm good, Gavin, man. Uh, thank you for having me on. Uh, you know the time difference is big between when our show comes on and when you're usually watching it. Uh, I'm happy to be a part of this call. I'm happy you reached out to me. Uh, you know that we love you on our show. Uh, it was amazing for us the first time we saw somebody from the UK watching some American guys doing a podcast, and you have always been one of our favorite people. Whenever we have you like tuned in and be a part of the show, it's always awesome. So it's an honor for me to sit here and do this with you today, and I can't wait for us to talk. Start talking some wrestling. No problem, Matt. and like everyone that basically the guys already know, like Cameron and Gary. Uh, Obviously, a bit of a backstory of yourself. I was just wondering, how did you actually get into professional wrestling? Uh, yeah, I've been a professional uh, professional wrestling fan since, I want to say, 1987. And I only say that because it was the first wrestling event I ever went to. It was a Saturday night's main event. And I will always remember, as a little kid, I was about three years old at the time, and um, my father was a huge, huge, huge Jake the Snake Roberts fan. And it was the night where Jake the Snake Roberts DDT'd Ricky the Dragon Steamboat out on the concrete floor, and they had to stop the match. And I asked my dad at the time, Daddy, what happened? What happened? And he'll always tell me, and he always, like, relayed this story to me, even from when I was a kid to when I grew up. He always says, your first wrestling show was the night that the snake bit the dragon. So that's how I'll always remember that night. So since that day forward... I've been a diehard fan, watched WWE, ECW, WCW, some NWA. I was a diehard Ring of Honor guy. Uh, I enjoy New Japan Pro Wrestling. I pretty much watch any and everything when I get a chance to. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. Is there's so much this day and age. It's like when I looked at this past week so far, how much they've crammed in from all different organizations. Imagine if you was like reviewing that stuff on your podcast all the time. Oh, it's, driving nuts. That's what I mean. I know you take little highlights from certain shows everything i think your shows will be through the roof i think it'd be about four or five hours long i know and they're already pushing three (laughs) yeah that's what i mean and i was just wondering what was the whole idea by behind it uwo podcast 
Uh, pretty much the UWO podcast was kind of spawned off of Carl Bird and the Codex Prime uh, podcast. And shout out to Carl and Victor. Um, most of us, we all, we all live in Rhode Island. Um, we I known Carl for a couple of years. I've always seen him at shows and he was working with one of my good friends from back in the day. Uh, me and Kyle have known each other since literally um, like kindergarten. We would take the but we used to take the bus together. We used to sit next to each other, and we bonded over pro wrestling back in the early '90s. And Eddie was a friend of Carl's. And one day on the Codex Prime podcast, they had me there, and Kyle saw me on the show, and was like, "Holy crap, that's Brian! I know him." And we reconnected. And then the second time I was on the show, Eddie was a part of the show, and myself and Eddie were like not really like the crap starters but more of like the realist in a wrestling group on facebook and kyle just crashed the show and the three of us just had chemistry that kyle started a facebook group chat and got us to go have wings and we sat there and he said hey i want to do a podcast you guys want to do it Uh, i found this app called anchor and we were like yeah sure and we just decided hey let's just talk about what we like me and eddie have very similar similar likes uh, in pro wrestling, we have different points of view at times, but um, we always see the common ground in what each other is saying. Kyle was more of the guy who watched the mainstream pro wrestling. He wasn't big on the indie scene the same way me and Eddie were. And Kyle was learning from us at the same time as opening our eyes when it comes to some of the opinions that we have. And the three of us just came up with a dynamic of guys that are just like, you know, we're wrestling fans. We have conversations like in America and Gary can attest to this. It's like we're like barbershop talk or yeah. some pl- some places may say it's like pub talk where you're with your boys and you just want to sit there and talk wrestling. That's what the UWO has always been. And if you notice, we say an urban world order. We're not saying a black world order, a white world order, a Spanish world order. We're an urban world order because urban fans do exist. And we have a perspective on pro wrestling compared to what some people may say is the dominated, you know, Caucasian view of pro wrestling. Like, trust me, uh, urban fans, we're fans too. And urban fans aren't just, you know, black and Spanish and Asian or whatever. It's, you know, those lower income kids that grew up not having money for front row tickets. It's the ones that had the nosebleeds from back in the day where you got lucky if your parents had money and be like, hey, I'll even get you a ticket to the show. But we were always fans. It's just like in sports where... You could be a fan of a football team and have never went to a game, but you are such a diehard that you would kill for a front row seat compared to the chick that's in the front row on her Instagram snapping pictures. We're those type of fans. We're the diehards. We're the ones who truly love this sport. Our opinions are harsh at times, but we're very, very real about how we feel. Yeah, that's what I like about your whole show every time when I've actually tuned in live because you give that different spark. I'm sick of seeing the carbon cut cut out it's like i say i'm not like any corporate bullshit that you get on any other podcast i'm laid back and i give people what they want to hear that's why i invited brian on because other than i've seen on your podcast is because the reason why i'm saying this i'll say this to you in a matter of speaking to your face brian and kyle and eddie are three of the passionate wrestling fans that i want them to go far and the as they say you're a small fish in a big pond. And Thanks. that's what I mean. That's what I really frustrates me. That, yeah, fair enough, it gets people tuning in live. Yeah, you may get people watching on demand. And this is why I'm hoping at some point in the nearest of the future that they can expand to, obviously, pop culture at wrestling.com, which t- TK's in talks with Brian as we speak yep. in the near distant future, which I, this is where they deserve. This is where they get their platform. Yeah, it may be... People may get offended with the humor they deliver, but they deliver passion. That's what I relate to them because I was brought up in the 80s with obviously 80s movies and everything. This is why I relate with Brian so much. Obviously, I re- relate to me other guests because they give their own opinion. But it's like when I look at the UWO podcast, if it weren't for them, I wouldn't be friends with the likes of Gary. And that's why I enjoy when I have guests on with me, a passionate about wrestling because people don't realize how passionate the wrestling world is. Even though if you don't like something, you still go back to it. 
mm-hmm. and that th- that community supports each other more than any other sport that I know, and that's why I, I want UWO podcast. If anyone's listening to this, check them out on Facebook. Thank you, Gavin. We truly appreciate it. You have no idea. Yeah, I've wanted to get that off my chest over a year now. That's why you're the man. <laughs> that's why you're the man, Gavin. I try. I try. And let me ask you too. Um, that, that's another reason why I like UWO and uh, everything you just said, Brian. And um, that's that, that has a serious promo. That's that's you dropping that uh that hard times uh promo right now. <laughs> we used to like, this the kids you who guys, couldn't you guys go know to me. Show, you guys get know me. That's what I do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and as soon as you said that, it took me to this is for the kids who can't afford the who couldn't afford the pay per view. They had to, you know. Listen to their friends talk about it, you know, at lunch, and you just gotta act like you watched it. <laughs> Here we go, them, so. Husky, Husky. You want me to hit your soul real quick? Go ahead. Uh, go let me hit it. your soul real quick. I'm sorry, Gavin. I'm gonna hijack the sofa. For, for no worry. Just, just a quick minute. I, I, I always but, say to people, "This is it, court, this is your floor as well. Go for okay, it." Okay. And I don't know how it is over in the UK from back in the day. And Gavin, you can attest to this. Cameron, I apologize because I know you are the younger one out of the, out of the four yeah, of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but back in the day when we had cable boxes, right? Before they had like all the digital stuff where the screen was just all black, used to have that little fuzzy, that little fuzzy thing where you couldn't you couldn't get the signal just right. But if yes. you sat there and you tapped your controller for a little bit, you could hear the audio crystal clear. Yes, like we we used to have that on Sky TV before it went digital. Exactly. When it was, you had to pay for the scramble channel. If yep. you didn't, you had just the audio. That's that, how I remember the likes of Jim Ross. I relate big time. That, that's how I used to listen to a lot of great pay-per-views. Before I was able to visually see them, I used to sit there and push the hell out of that back button on my controller or sit there on my old brown cable box and push the button and would listen to two and a half hours of pro wrestling when I couldn't afford a pay-per-view. Like That's how far back and what my passion is for this business. I've also attempted to train to be in this business. Unfortunately for me, my life took a different path and I wasn't able to pursue it. But I have a basis and understanding of the way the wrestling business works from a different perspective of some people who've never even attempted it. So when it comes to my perspective on pro wrestling as being a part of the UWO, I give you that guy who got off his couch, said, screw it, let me try it, got in there, learned a bit, had the ability to work with a couple people. But unfortunately for me, like I said, life took a different path. I won't get too far into it, but anyone who listens to the UWO knows that story. Um, I chose not to pursue, but I never stopped being a fan of this business. And that's what I love about this business. So when I'm hard on this business, I have just emotion on why I'm being hard on the business. But at the same time, it's like I can give you a reason why I'm being hard at that point. Like I can tell you why. Nia Jax is horrible in the ring, but I'm not going to denounce how great of a, or like how good of a human being she is, or the fact that she's even in there trying, but we all know she's a botch machine. And Gavin, you can continue. I'm sorry. And that wraps up today's show. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, guys. (laughs) I I went over my time. (laughs) No, you're all right, man. It's like... You're passionate about it. That's what I I like when people show raw passion towards I'll it. I'll tell you a story as well, because I, I was actually, because I also myself, you might not know this, Brian, but I also, a while ago when I was about 16, I actually tried a little bit of wrestling myself as well. Nice. nice. Um, it was like locally, it was, well, in my area, it was, you know, well, where I live again in the UK, but... Like I, I, you know, and I, I can tell you again as well, like pro wrestling again, as much as people think that it's just easy and that as much as they want to discredit it, it is really hard. It is, it is really, you know, difficult as well. And I'm just saying this, that as well, like what, what Brian's saying there, like you think it's easy, but it's not when you do it. But that just, again, shows like I still have a level of passion just because I couldn't pursue it doesn't mean I'm not still passionate about wrestling, you know, exactly. like Brian. Exactly. I had to get that out there, but that's that's what I mean. It's like when people say to me, "If you're not happy with it, turn off." You don't understand how much it's helped us through tough times. For real, just it's give us that break true. from reality. But yeah. it's like when I'm looking at this WrestleMania card. Oh Jesus Christ! So, 
Seven matches per night as it stands. Hopefully they don't add any more tomorrow night. So where to start? Night one. With Wikipedia, they do not put them in order. So I'm going, because we don't know the order it's going to go until the night. So we'll start off with Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair for the SmackDown Women's Championship. And obviously currently Sasha Banks is going to go for basically defending the title against Bianca Belair. I'll hand this one over to Brian. Don't take half an hour. <laughs> I'll try to be quick with this one. But no, um, I'll say this much. Uh, personally, for me, and I don't know how Gary would feel about this, I personally have been wanting this to be the main event of night one. I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be on night one, so I would personally would love to see this as the main event for that night. Um, for me, it's Bianca's story. Bianca has been that blue-chip athlete that has come out of nowhere and honestly, I think with all due respect to Sasha, she can hold this L and still bounce back and be the boss. But with a character like Bianca, you can't not strike when the iron is hot. Mm-hmm. Over to Gary. So, um, you know, I talked last night with Cameron. I said, I want Bianca to win. If it's the main event, Bianca wins. If it's the co-main event, Sasha retains. That's the way I'm going because... Um, just because after Bianca had that moment at Rumble, I feel like, you know, they love that moment. And that's why I feel like she has a good shot at winning at, um, at the Rumble. But as far as my pick, excuse me, at Mania. So as far as my pick goes, I'm going with Bianca. That's what my heart wants. And I think that I think that's what's good for business to have a Bianca win. Yeah. Over to you, Cameron. Uh, well, yeah, like uh, as the son, like with Gary, la- with Gary last night, we did go a bit into depth, you know, about this. But I will say, yeah, I, I think like I'm in agreement with Brian. I think like I want this to be the main event of night one of WrestleMania as well, because I just think these two can can have the best, you know, could arguably have the best match of the entire weekend at, at this year's WrestleMania. And this is no offense to you know to Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre, but I just think. I'm more interested with with Sasha and Bianca. I just think it would be again cool for Sasha as well to to main event at WrestleMania. I think that's what you know Sasha fans want uh, as well. So you know, um, and, and it would be cool. But as far as my prediction, like yeah, I, I like I have gone with Sasha to retain. But again, it all depends. It's like what Gary said. It depends where they put this on the card. It depends where it falls into place, but but I'll probably say Sasha, but again, you know, again, like the other two are saying, you know, Bianca right now is red hot. She's, they should strike while she's over and while she's, you know, getting the push she is at the moment and that fans are getting behind Bianca since she won the Rumble. Well, and even before the Rumble, you know, with her feud with Bailey that kind of ended, but yeah, so... I would like to see Bianca win, but I'm going to say Sasha only because I still think, again, it's not going to make Bianca look bad. So I'll say Sasha. To retain. That's an interesting swerve to everything. It's like I was thinking, this is the time that I feel like they could be passing the torch to Bianca because, yeah, she's hot with the fans at the moment. I think, no disrespect to you when they're on the main roster. I'm thinking back when they were in NXT. If they were both in NXT at the same time, I think they could steal the show. And I'm hoping they kind of prove people wrong when people are shooting this match down. I really hope they are allowed to deliver what they want because this is technically the first wrestling show in America they've got crowds going in. Even though they're in pods, and you're actually going to feel real emotion, I'm just hoping you do. Because I don't want people to say, oh, they went to WrestleMania, they didn't feel, see this match as what it was built up to be. Great, okay. But you've got to realise, this is the first live show, let them be themselves. Don't be static and generic, and which a carbon cut out like a video game. Let them try and steal, each match, try and steal the show from more. And I'm hoping Bianca Bella wins this one. I really do, because this is the time that I feel like you need to pass the star power to someone else and elevate them. That's what I think they've actually done. That's why they put it with Sasha, which is a good thing. 
Right, next match of the card, we've obviously got the bottom, well, the card that was on Wikipedia, but the terminology card is banned by WWE. I do apologise. But looking at this one, it's Bobby Lashley with MVP versus Drew McIntyre for the WWE Championship. I'll land this one over to Gary to start this one off. Uh, uh, wait, what match did you say? Did you fall asleep? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, Brian, I was looking at some notes. I'm looking at my notes. No, no. I'm sorry. I was looking at some notes. Uh, um, because I, of course, I have them in a different order than what we were talking about. But um, oh, you got what... cheat sheets. It's the <laughs> Bobby Lashley with MVP oh. versus Drew McIntyre. Page forty-five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have Lashley retaining. I like the chase of Drew going for the title more than I do like him having the title. Um, right now, Bobby Lashley, he's red hot. You know, I think that that's the reason why they broke up the Hurt Business, even though I was upset about it. Lashley's hot right now. This is probably the best Lashley we've seen since TNA. And um, I'd like to have Lashley have it for a little more time, at least up until hopefully Survivor Series. I know that's pushing it, but if he could have it to the fall until fans really, really get back in attendance, once fans get back in attendance, he could drop it. But for right now, I got to go with Lashley retaining. Okay. I'll hand this one over to Cameron. Uh, right. Um, yeah, I think uh, for this match, again, it's interesting because, again, like with the fans again, you know, back at WrestleMania, I think this is where they're going to see the reaction that Drew gets as well for the first time as a baby face. Well, the first time I mean that he's kind of going to get, you know, a, a reaction and all that from a live audience again since, you know, last year, you know, when he won the Royal Rumble and all that. But then fans didn't get to see him facing Brock last year. So, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see what reaction he'll get because recently Drew's really been, I think he's been like more kind of, it's hard to say, but I think he's been kind of acting like too hard to try and get himself over, if you know what I mean. But I think that's yeah. what the WWE's been giving him. You know, you know what I mean, Gavin? Yeah, I know. I know what you mean. I feel like he's trying to be the new Triple H. That's how I. Yeah. Got, that's how I feel when I, every time when I see him. Yeah, it's like they're trying too hard with with Drew. I think like they are trying a bit too hard. But I do agree with Gary. I think it is better like having him maybe chase for the title to, to go after Bobby Lashley here at WrestleMania because I think it makes more sense from a storyline, you know, again, standpoint, like we're saying. So, but yeah, like I definitely think though it, it, it could be a good match. I mean, I still don't get why they broke up the Hurt Business, but again, I'm not going to, you know, go into all that. I mean, we all we all have our thoughts on that, but... I I don't I just don't get why they wanted to do that right before Mania, especially when they were just getting into like again, like they were getting into their um, not even at their peak, you know, so, you know, but uh, so that is what it is. But with Lashley again, he's still over on his own. He can still, you know, he's still been doing well. But I just think without the hurt business, it has slightly affected him. But yeah, but I'm still interested. I mean, I think Lashley has definitely earned more, you know, he's earned more praise recently and all that. And uh, I think he's definitely, you know, been getting better. So, yeah, I'm interested in this match. But again, I don't think this should main event WrestleMania because, again, I think like Brian, it should be Sasha and Bianca. But that's just me. I think we, you've got to try something different because, you know, so... Yeah, in terms of my prediction, though, I'm going to say Drew McIntyre wins the WWE Championship because, again, it's like what I said, um, that I think with Drew, they want to see the reaction he might get if he wins. Like, it depends on the reaction he gets. But I think because of the crowd being there as well, I could see it going Drew's way. But, you know, but I, I hope Lashley retains because I think, honestly, he he's been working more hard than Drew has recently and you know and it's took him a longer time to get to this spot uh, just as long as Drew so but yeah but I think Drew's gonna win I think he'll become the WWE champion and uh yeah I'll say I'll go with Drew 
And you, bro? All right. For this one, it's like, do I go with my head or do I go with my heart? Um, my heart wants to say Bobby Lashley is going to win this match because my heart wants eventually a, bo- a long Bobby Lashley run and a Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar match. And the way it's looking in America, the places are starting to open up more. They're starting to think that you know fans are going to be going to be able to start attending shows again. And we don't know if WWE is planning on touring or just having something open down in Orlando. But I feel like the Brock return isn't too far away. So I'm hoping they keep the title on Lashley. But my head is telling me Vince wants to relive that moment for Drew McIntyre in front of fans. And I think I think the estimation is what, like 25 to almost 30,000 people for this WrestleMania coming up. And I feel like Vince probably owes Drew that moment since Drew got robbed of it last year for reasons beyond everyone's control. So I don't know. And the breakup of the Hurt Business to me was one of those, like, why the hell? I, I saw it coming a mile away. I knew this was happening a while ago. But I'm just looking at it like you're waiting three weeks before WrestleMania to break up the Hurt Business. Something is wrong here. So... As much as I want Lashley to retain, I feel like at WrestleMania, Drew is going to get the win. Yeah. It's the same with me. It's like I'm thinking Drew's going to have it because it's come full circle for him because he's came through FCW and pretty much the documentary, if you've seen the FCW, I'm not going to say the place where you can watch it because I don't want to piss off two Americans. (laughs) But... (laughs) It starts with three initials that ends in network. Oh. Oh, we, we can have a discussion about the cock anytime you want. <laughs> you're, you're, oh, you already know that. There it is. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's it's horrible. You I we are we just know us Americans are very jealous of you right now. Don't worry, we're at apparently <laughs> don't what I've actually heard, the edits that your guys getting for Peacock apparently is gonna be boosted onto the WWE network so we can get the same. Eventually, but until then, and, and please be happy with what you guys have. <laughs> it's hurting us. We are. We are happy. Yeah, and it still costs nine 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 a month. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what that's I mean. A- it's like I'm hoping. That's what I mean. I'm torn between the two. Myself is because how how could you pull this one off? Personally, this is my own opinion it could be one big swerve with the hurt business breaking up it could be just just to get a ruse get people interested get people talking about the product then all of a sudden they've reformed at wrestlemania to back up uh bobby lashley but on the other sense i'm hoping drew gets it as well but poor old drew don't get me wrong like i mentioned not that long ago just reminds me of a knockoff of triple h that's how he comes across to me. That gimmick was cheesy when they tried to do it in FCW, and they've slapped him on him again, and I feel like that doesn't work. I feel like they need to go back to his indie roots. Not turn into Drew Galloway, turn into the person that he built, reinvented himself when he got first release, because everyone thought, oh, he's going to fade away and everything. He went back to ICW. He went to... Evolve, if I remember rightly, he got himself noticed, he got himself over, and that's the roots that I would love him in. But I don't like the current gimmick, and that's just me on his opinion. But I just feel like the likes of Drew, I think he's going to get this, and that's just my honest opinion. Right, match three, we've actually got the match of the whole event Bad Barbie and Damian Priest versus. The Miz and John Morrison for the in a basically a tag team match, which I'll hand over to Cameron. Okay. Um, well, first off, again, I, I have said I did again briefly touch on this last night, but I'm not going to lie. I do not. I no, I do not know a whole lot about you know Bad Bunny. I'm not going to lie. I don't know a lot about his music. I don't know a lot about his you know whole music career. I do know, I think recently, again, he won a Grammy because they've been saying that on Raw. But 
Um, but I think it's interesting again to getting you know publicity again into WrestleMania, which is obviously again which WWE always needs that. They always need that for WrestleMania, especially. But um, so it's cool bringing Bad Bunny in, and to be fair, like I think he he has like been trying. I think you can tell he's been trying to pick things up. He has been you know trying you know I think his best. Uh, and all that, I think he's picked up pretty quickly as well, you know, and I think him being paired with Damian Priest is is good because Gary's actually said that he's actually met Damian Priest and he actually thinks he's a good, you know, he's a cool guy in real life and all that. So I think, that, again, it'll be more than than helpful with, with Bad Bunny and, and that, but, uh, you know, and I'm sure he's probably helped him a, a little bit. So... But yeah, I mean, and, and it's good as well. This was a tag team match because originally it was supposed to be Bad Bunny versus The Miz, which wouldn't have been as good. So I'm glad it's a tag team match because I think Bad Bunny does need Damian Priest out there with him. Um, you know, just to, again, just to help him a bit, a little bit, just to, you know, yeah, well, yeah, just to have somebody with him. So, yeah. Uh, and with like Miss and Morrison, I mean, yeah, like I think it's it's interesting that they're in this, uh, you know, match here. But I think it's the right opponent for Bad Bunny to go up against as well. And uh, you know, I don't know if you saw the, the the segment they had as well on Raw where they um had where they spray painted his car recently. Did you see that, Gavin? Or yeah, I saw the paint. Don't worry, it'll wash off. It looks like finger paint anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Um, but yeah, in terms of my prediction, it's pretty obvious. I think Bad Bunny and, and Damian Priest are gonna are gonna win, and the, uh, because it's Bad Bunny, you know, well, and it's his first WrestleMania match, but also Damian Priest as well. It'd be good just to see him get you know a win at Mania as well, because I still think he's going to have a much more bigger impact, hopefully, as as he uh, goes on. You know, Damian Priest on the main roster. I hope so. Because, you know, Keith Lee's been going quiet recently. So I hope that, you know, they're going to do more with Damian Priest after Mania uh, going forward. But for this match, I mean, yeah, Priest and, and Bad Bunny, I think, will win. And, yeah, they'll beat Miz and Morrison. Yeah, I'll hand this over to Brian. All righty. Well, anybody who knows the UWO podcast know that this matchup holds this very special place in our heart. Because uh, one third of our show, Mr. Eddie Ortiz, made an amazing trip 10 years ago down to Atlanta to see The Miz face John Cena at WrestleMania. And he regrets every day of his life since then. Um, The Miz is despised by Mr. Eddie Ortiz. That is the reason why I am taking The Miz. No, I'm just kidding. Um, No, this is WWE's uh, celebrity matchup that they do every year. Uh, They always have the celebrity involvement one way or another. Um, the celebrity always wins, LOL. That's the best way I can put it. Uh, Damian Priest really isn't getting much of a rub. Being with Bad Bunny, I know some people are like, oh, it's good exposure for him. But for the past, I want to say about month or so, he has done diddly squat working with Bad Bunny. Uh, the Miz and, well, pretty much the Miz is Teflon right now. He can eat L's all day long. Uh, I feel like it's going to be the beginning of the breakup for him and Morrison. I feel like Morrison finally needs his opportunity to go out and do his own thing and not being the Miz's shadow and wearing stupid haircuts and stuff. But, um, yeah, I'm going to go with uh, the celebrity and uh, Damian Priest on this one. Your turn, Gary. All right. So um, I'm actually, you know, excited to see what Bad Bunny is going to do for this match. You know, I like that promo he cut, you know, talking about, um, you know, the Puerto Rican wrestling roots, you know. You know, WWE has had a history in the past, you know, working with Puerto Rico. Then it kind of soured over the years. So I'm anxious anxious to see what's going to happen after this match. So I think Bad Bunny is going to take it seriously. I think he's a student of the business. You know, I think he generally likes it. You know, he helped that 24-7 title like it was gold. <laughs> so um, with that being said, um, I do have them winning. Morrison is going to take the pin from Bunny. You know, I think, you know, Damon Priest is going to hit the reckoning and, you know, Bad Bunny is going to do a splash or something, you know, something minor. And um, I'm going to go from there. So I think WWE is really trying to, you know, um, I hate to say it like this, but the Mexican experiment kind of failed with the push with um, Umberto and, you know, Andrade and all that kind of failed. You know, not to their fault, you know, but I think WWE still wants to pursue a Latin market. And I think they're going to look at, you know, Puerto Rico. And maybe that'll open things up for his future things, you know, relationships 
even though they kind of, you know, done Epico and, you know, um, Primo and Epico wrong. So I'm thinking of like long term, I think they're really trying to, you know, get the Latin fans back and they're doing it with Bad Bunny instead of, you know, going the, the Mexican way per se. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like I, when um, whenever the Triple H is teased, apparently three more NXT brands. I think this could be the start of it, where it's like Puerto Rico and all that lot, all different areas. I'm just wondering which markets he could actually crack at the moment because there's stiff competition already out there. So they don't want to waste too much, but I think where they can actually tap into the likes of India and so on like that, would be a good idea, to be honest. This will be... Because apparently this guy is over like crazy. He's like a Hulk Hogan in the music industry in his own country, what I've been hearing. And, but it's like, when I look at this match, hmm, could it be entertaining? Could it prove us wrong? Who knows until the event. But... I just got that gut feeling Miz and Morrison's going to get this one. I just got that feeling that's not going to last too long, but it's going to be interesting to see which way this one goes. So Miz and Morrison for me for actually having the win on this one. Then we're going to go on to the next match, sponsored by Wikipedia, which needs to enforce the sponsor, but they don't sponsor me. (laughs) But, But We'll look at the next match of the card, which is the New Day, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods versus AJ Styles and Omas for the tag team titles of Raw. I'd like to hand this one over to Brian. This is an interesting one for me because I've always been the aside when it comes to tag team wrestling that I am a traditionalist. I enjoy a real team. I don't like when two guys are thrown together. Um, I will always argue that the Dudley Boys are the greatest tag team of all time. I will fight anybody on that. That is my personal opinion. Uh, but when it comes to tag teams in WWE, Vince has always had a thing where he never truly cared about it. And when an odd pairing is together, they usually come across and win. So my pick is going to be AJ and Amos. But the reason why I'm going with that is because for like pretty much two different reasons. One is the New Day already has the record from the Dudley Boys in WWE with 11 times or 12 times now holding the titles. But I feel like the New Day has always been a group where they want to wish things into existence. And being from where I'm from in Rhode Island, we've actually held the most of, and I feel like WWE is eventually going to bring back the King of the Ring. And the New Day has always been saying they want Xavier Woods to win King of the Ring. And I don't know if he's going to do that as a face or a heel. And seeing that whole Sub-Zero and Scorpion outfit has been kind of throwing me off a little bit for anyone who's a fan of that lore. But it, it's it's starting to show Xavier in a different light. If you guys notice, he's doing a lot of wrestling. He's picking up a lot of wins on a lot of people. I wouldn't be shocked if they got the crown off Corbin and got rid of that gimmick with the whole King Corbin thing and actually do another King of the Ring and have an Xavier Woods go on that little bit of a solo run with him and Kofi having some weird interactions in between. But for Mania, I can clearly see AJ and Amos winning this. Interesting. Over to you, Gary. Uh, already, um, I, I don't know. I, this could go either way it goes. Only reason I have New Day retaining because I'm not sure how green Omas is. So I feel like having him in a tag team match keeps him safe, kind of like hide his flaws per se. But at the same time, you know, if he's not working with other experienced guys, then, you know, it's kind of pointless to put the straps on him. So I think this is like a test run just to see how he is in the ring, see how the fans kind of take to him. And that as well, you know, he's going to work with AJ Styles, who could coach him through it. And AJ is, you know, one of the best in the business. You know, he's arguably, he's he's my GOAT. I think he's my greatest of all time right now. And also, with Trump, the New Day, you know, they're, they're, they're seasoned. You know, they're probably the most seasoned tag team they have on, on the ball right now. Yeah, it, actually, they, 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 I think they are the most seasoned tag team that's cohesive enough to work with somebody who's green. So, um, I think that's why I have them retaining, but I wouldn't be surprised if they take the straps off New Day, but I think that might be a waste right now because the Raw Tag Team division is probably the weakest 
it's a little weaker. Actually, all the tag team division WWE is kind of whack right now, except for NXT, but that's a whole different conversation. But I think um, SmackDown has a little bit better tag teams than Raw right now, so I, that's why I think they're going to have them retain. Okay. Over to you, Cameron. Um, yeah, well, I'm in agreement. I think I'm in agreement with Brian. I'm going to go ahead and say I think AJ and Omos, Omos are actually going to win the World Tag Team Championships here because as much as... Again, as much as it was cool, you know, whenever the New Day win the World Tag Team titles, but to me, it's like it does get kind of repetitive. It does feel like they only took them off the Hurt Business because they were breaking them up because they were, again, like we said earlier, that we saw it coming with the Hurt Business, like Brian said, you know, them breaking up and all that. And that was, you know, what again, another, you know, uh, hint there, but... But, um, like, I didn't mind it at first. It was cool. But at the same time, like, you know, again, they are 11-time champions now and you can't take that away uh, from the New Day. You can't take that away from either Xavier or Kofi. But I think, um, yeah, I think Big E's done really well for himself, you know, at the moment on SmackDown. Out of the three of them, I think he's kind of tried to, you know, branch out a bit more now, which I think we've wanted to see from Big E for a while. But... But it's like, yeah, as far as um, with AJ's involvement, though, this year at Mania, I am, I have to say, personally, I'm a little bit kind of torn that he's in a tag team match this year, because especially after last year, the, the Boneyard match with The Undertaker was cool. And I really like, I think, he, I thought he did really well in that Boneyard match as well. And I just think like he does deserve a I mean, I think he could have deserved a bit better, AJ, for this WrestleMania. But at the same time, I'm just glad that he's getting, you know, uh, a match, you know, at the end of the day at WrestleMania. Because a lot of guys are missing this this card. A lot of guys are missing out on WrestleMania this year. So I'm glad AJ is, is again, is, is having a match. And I think, you know, him and Omos has, has been OK as, as a tag team. But again, like we don't know how how Omos is going to do. I think clearly this is more to do with, with Omos than AJ uh, to see how he's going to do in this tag team match, how he's going to perform uh, because we don't know how, again, how green he is. And, and again, that's why I think in the first place, that's why that they got probably AJ to maybe um, be with uh, Omos. So, but, you know, but as far as it goes, I think, yeah, I could definitely see AJ and Omos becoming World Tag Team Champions because there was that shock win that Xavier Woods got over AJ. But afterwards, that AJ said on Raw, like, the only win that matters is at WrestleMania. So I think that, I think AJ and Omos will win. I, I genuinely do think the presence of Omos as well. I can't see how the New Day are going to really be able to try and take him down unless if, like, they do something crazy. But... I think I think they're gonna win, and I'm gonna say Omos and AJ will become War Tag Team Champions. Plus, it would be cool for AJ to to win the tag titles as well. But you know, but but that's my thoughts. Yeah, but that's what I mean. It's like I'm intrigued what Omos can actually do because I don't think we've like, have we actually seen him in the match at all. Because I'm no, not... no. That's what I mean. I'm just hoping it's like I know it's weird to compete compare, but that Ronda Rousey feel going into this. Because no one knew what she was going to do when it came to WrestleMania. It was one of the entertaining matches we've actually seen in WrestleMania history. Because it had a bit of everything and other than the crowd. But it's like, do we have that same picture of the tag team titles? I think this could be an interesting one. I really haven't got a clue which way this one's going to go. I... Deep down, I think um, New Day is actually going to win this, retain. Because I think they're going to do so. If they're allowed to do high spots as much as I want to them to see, let them be in it. Because AJ can take it. I don't know about Omos, but I know that likes what Kofi can do. I think there's going to be oh my god moments in this match. And I'm hoping New Day actually retain. And drop that New Day name, please. <laughs> because it's doing my head in here in it now. It's run its course. But then we go on to the next match, which is Braun Strowman versus Shane Man in the Steel Cage match. I'll hand this one over to Gary. 
we didn't ask for this. We asked for a match with uh, Alistair Black and Buddy Murphy, and we asked for matches like this. Why? Why do they have to bully us like this? <laughs> you know, <laughs> honestly, um, you know, of course, when we get our Shane, you know, cage spot with Shane, we're gonna get that. But I have Shane winning. I I think Braun is done. I'm not sure how much he has left on his contract. I don't see him with WWE too much longer. I think they've soured on Braun the way they've been booking him, and he's injury prone here and there. So, um, I, I don't think we miss Braun per se. I mean, he was hot at one point in time. He got injured. You know, great yeah. gimmick, you know, giving people the hands. But I think this is like uh, the beginning of the end for him. He could have one more Mania match, and he's gonna kind of gonna fizzle off and go away. Um, like I said, I don't see him with the uh, company much longer. You know, another way they could write him off TV, and. I think that's the only reason why, you know, he, he's even on WrestleMania because of Shane. You know, I think he may have a hand shake agreement with something. So to me, it's pointless. The whole lead up was pointless, was stupid. And um, I don't know, Cameron told me last night that I looked it up, that I uh, skipped the whole, you know, fake fifth grade report card. You know, it's, it's, it's silly and stupid. And they, they're taking away two spots for other people who are still signed with the company who can still put on a good show to entertain us. So, um, there's going to be some shenanigans involved. You're going to have Elias and Riker come out and try to do something. He's going to, you're probably going to get ran over per se. And, you know, it, it's going to be predictable. It's going to be trash. And um, I, I have Shane winning. Okay. Over to you, Cameron. Uh, yeah, well, I'm glad there that Gary already mentioned that because I don't want to go over that again, over that whole fake score report because that was honestly one of the most pointless segments that i think was done in in a while um so yeah that whole thing was was stupid that whole thing was just pointless but yeah like i I mean i've already kind of like said about this i don't really want to carry on talking about it i've said this to gavin actually off off camera and like wow off you know how i feel about this match i think this is just a pointless match uh, for WrestleMania, I think this is probably like the least match out of everything out on this whole WrestleMania weekend. I'm just not looking forward to. Again, you could have done something else. You could have, you know, as what what Gary's saying, you could have given Alistair Black or Murphy here a chance at WrestleMania or somebody a bit more, but, but just something more interesting. It's like I I just don't get this. I mean, it's cool having Shane at WrestleMania, but again, if they're having him like being watered down and, and not like going to take it seriously and just goofing around. And I just think who cares? It's like, you know, it's, it's getting old now with, with that. It's just getting old. And, and so, yeah, but in my opinion though, I think in my opinion, Bron Bron is going to be um, Shane McMahon. I think Bron will find a way to, to beat Shane because that's how it seems like it's going in the direction it is going in, in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, I see Braun winning, but I'm not going to keep touching on it anymore. You know, it's it's over now. I just want it to, to end at Mania in this steel cage match. I mean, yeah, Shane again could, you know, pull shenanigans like uh, Gary said, but but I'll say Braun will, will ultimately win. Yeah, I know, I, before he says it, I know Brian's going to say this is a match of the night. Over two shows. <laughs> <laughs> Over to you, Brian. Five star classic. That's all <laughs> I can say. No, the key word here, and Gary used it, and Cameron both used it, is the word stupid. This entire storyline is based on Shane McMahon calling Braun Strowman stupid. Like, this is a <laughs> WrestleMania match. Like I, they, there's been hair versus hair matches. There's been custody of children. Hell, there's even been a Judy Bagwell on a pole match. Now we're yeah. having a match because somebody called somebody stupid. This is the most be a star match I've ever heard in my life. This is what my, I know my British counterparts would call the Lou match. This is the match that after you had a pint or two, you got up off your couch and said, you know something, I'm going to the Lou. That's what it is, okay? This match is pointless. It's stupid. Nobody cares who wins or loses. This isn't going to change anything. And I'm going with Shane McMahon because, ooh, there's something high. I'm going to jump off of that. Just say piss break for fuck's sake. Oh, come on. I'm learning. I'm learning. Put the match in the bin. It's rubbish. It's, in the bin. it's, it's rubbish. It's, it's, it's rubbish. It's garbage. It's 
Oh, bitch. Pure rubbish. Yep. <laughs> I say it's garbage. trash. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, anyway, who's gonna win then, Brian? I'm going with Shane. Shane's gonna Shane's gonna find a way to win. Braun's gonna get his revenge at like Extreme Rules or something. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going with Shane. I, I, I hope you're wrong there. I hope you're wrong there, Brian. I, I don't you, want and to the, you and me both. <laughs> if it if it happens at Extreme Rules, what is it? Go to bed match or something. <laughs> Pack your bedtime match. Uh, no. Clock comes say, down, the first one to hop in the bed, and their time. Snuggie wins. <laughs> to say this is past Cameron's bedtime anyway, he's the young one of the group. <laughs> hey. I'm 22. Oh, and he still oh. has all his hair, and Brian's lost all his. That's true. <laughs> but it's like, when I look at this match, I'm like, why? Why? I was really... And the weird thing is, as attire, when I first ever saw um, Braun's new attire, I thought, God, Bennett, is he working as a dustbin man? <laughs> I, li- I literally thought, is he working as a part time dustbin man? <laughs> you got more chance of leaving him in catering and enjoying himself more than dressed like that. And I can't believe in Braun at all. At all, <laughs> massively nowadays. I can't take him seriously. But this, get, like you guys have said, it's a stupid match, pointless match. And yet, you're using just think of all the past case matches we've had, actually had some clinical good matches. Mm-hmm. This one, put it under the rug, get away from it. But going into this one, I don't know why, but I think Shay's going to get the victory of this. Oh, God, I can't believe I've actually talked about that dog shit match. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. It's like... Yeah, it's... Why, yeah. Why? Do you would expect this on a... No, sort of a weekly product. Mm-hmm. Not but not, even... on a, not on WrestleMania. Not on Mania. You don't do this on Mania. You just don't. Just think how much those fans are paying all that money. I had to get that one in pipe bomb. True. <laughs> All that money just to see Braun and Shane in a cage. Jeez. And then we'll go <laughs> on to the sixth match of second to last match of the night one is Cesaro versus no other than Seth Rollins. Looks like he's got Kool Aid suit to a f- flaming suit. <laughs> I'll hand this one over to Cameron. How how do you feel this one's going to go down? Uh, well, yeah. Look, um, I think this is interesting. Now, this, I mean, finally Cesaro has actually got a singles match at WrestleMania, which I think finally, like for some wrestling fans, that they've been wanting that for a while. Like for Cesaro, just to finally get a singles match at WrestleMania. Like especially if you've been following Cesaro like for a while now. Uh, in the last couple of years, like you know that again, how how good he is, Cesaro. You know, like what he can offer, uh, you know, and all that. And the fact that again, he's just not been pushed to like to the main event scene, or the fact that he's never really gotten anywhere close. It's like it's it's still like one of you know, it's it's just um, a surprise. But but nope. I mean, finally, he, he's he's got his first singles match at WrestleMania, and it's against you know, well, Seth Rollins. So I think that was. You know, a, a good choice as well, because I think Seth Rollins and Cesaro is going to be, uh, unlike, you know, Braun and Shane, I think it's going to, you know, be a better match, clearly. I think that, well, I'm not going to complain about that. So I think, yeah, and I think it's going to be one of the better matches of uh, night one as well, uh, Cesaro and Rollins. I think if, if they can just let them go out there and have a good, you know, 10 to 15 minute match, uh, like what a bit like what Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins had last year at WrestleMania, which was also pretty underrated. But I think um in terms of this match, I think it's gonna be interesting. And I think Cesaro's gonna beat Seth Rollins. I think Cesaro's gonna get a, a big win here at Mania as well over Seth Rollins because I think again, it's like what I said the other night. I think this is a, a win well, like you know, this this is like uh it's like because it's like it's like a non new situation, really. Because I think you know, uh, you know, Cesaro's good, Rollins is good, 
And I think whoever comes out, I mean, Rollins won't be too affected by this either way if he if he loses to Cesaro. But uh, but yeah, so I'm having Cesaro beat Seth Rollins because I don't think it is going to hurt Seth Rollins. And if anything, you know, that you know, maybe they'll have a rematch, maybe after Mania, but like a blow off match. But uh, but yeah, but I think Cesaro wins here at Mania. So yeah, yeah. And over to you, Brian. Uh, this match to me means a lot as a former Ring of Honor fan. Um, as watching like the independents and stuff, I loved Tyler Black. I was at his second to last show in Ring of Honor. Um, Claudio, aka Cesaro, had his tryout match in Providence, Rhode Island, where I live. Um, I was obsessed with these guys on the indies. I know what they can do. I went to the Hammerstein Ballroom and seen a four way with those two guys, Brian Danielson and um, and Nigel McGuinness. I know what those two guys could do. And I will say this, I'm going with Cesaro to win, and please, WWE, make this the opening match for night one. If they're on night one, make this the opening match, because that match will go down in history. If they let these two guys go out there and just perform, could be one of the greatest opening matches to WrestleMania history. If these two guys are given, like, like I know Cameron said, like 10 to 15, I want 15 to 20. Give me 20 minutes of these two guys out in that ring and just tearing it up and let them pull out some of the stuff that they don't, they're not allowed to normally do at WWE because it's WrestleMania. I want to see Cesaro bust out the UFO. I want to see Tyler pull out the God's last gift or uh, paroxysm, something like that. Do something different. It's WrestleMania time. If you let these two guys go out there, they will steal the entire show. So my pick for this match is Cesaro. I, I, this is what another reason why I'm glad I've got you on the podcast. I was like, you're going to compare this to the independent days. I know you're going to do it. So I saw this match being confirmed. Oh, of course. This is the, uh, this yeah. is a wet dream for me. At WrestleMania, yeah. thank yeah. God. Uh, yeah. yeah. Over to you then, Gary. So um, I love the two competitors in this match. And I'm trying to... You know, with WWE, you know, I'm trying to... I need to just watch the match for what it is. I know it's going to be a good match. I know they're going to do some athletic stuff. But I can't help to think, okay, what's going to happen in the future? And I, I hate to put on my, my booking hat, you know? So, Seth loses, no big deal. He can always put himself over. You know, he was a Monday Night Messiah. And as I like to say, now he's a SmackDown savior. So, he could, he could still lose and still put Cesaro over, you know? Cesaro, he's over, but... Same thing, like you know, he'll the WWE will give him a push and then they'll drop it or it doesn't pan out. So, I really don't have a dog in this fight. I really want Cesaro to win because I'm curious to see what type of title situation they're willing to put him in. You know, you know, I hate to say it like this, I, I'll he's never going to be the face of the company, they're never going to put the you know. The, uh, the world title on them. So we're looking at either the IC title or the US title, but the IC title is on SmackDown. You know, mm. for me, I could see him with the IC title, but I, I want so much more for, you know, Cesaro because he's been there. He's a great worker. You know, I love him on NXT. You know, I've seen some of his stuff on the Indies um, via YouTube, you know, with him and um, Chris Hero, you know, and I've seen some of his ROH work. So, for me, it's like I don't want to get myself disappointed. So I want him, him to get pushed to the moon, but at the same time, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to cut short either. So it's a weird spot with him. So um, I'm going with Cesaro because I hopefully, hopefully WWE is ready just to shake things up a little bit and um, to give him a, a shot of some type of, of significant singles run with uh, one of the titles. So who was your pick again? Sorry. Yes, I'm going with Cesaro because I want him to have a significant title. Hopefully, WWE will give it to him with one of their titles. Hopefully, with the IC title sometime down the road. I'm the same. I'm hoping Cesaro gets this one because I know it's bringing up a future pay-per-view, but I think Cesaro is going to get money in the bank this year. Ooh, I would love that. That would be good. Interesting. I literally can see it coming because... Why all of a sudden you start putting a spotlight on Cesaro? Yeah, he may have re- signed a new contract. 
but you're putting more of a spotlight on him. You're putting him with like someone like Seth Rollins, former main eventer. So if this works out, I hope it does. Cesaro is going to get money in the bank. He's going to win this match to elevate him even more going forward. You don't need a mouthpiece. Remember, don't forget, Paul Heyman's still in the business. He, If I remember rightly, he was a Paul Heyman guy in the early days. So, uh, yeah, he, that's true. So that's what I mean. It's like I'm really intrigued to see what's going forward on that match from going... I really can see it happening. Please do it right. Execute it right. And then we go on to the last match of night one. Hard to believe that how many matches we've already gone through. It's time just <laughs> flying by. That's not me taking I'm enjoying every minute of this, to be honest. I enjoy having guests. It's like when I did the takeover predictions on my own. I did an audio clip from Celine Dion. I don't want to be by myself. <laughs> Which, if you play the part, that's why I was taking the piss because Gary he was too late. He was with his moms. So, what? huh? What happened? I oh, know, no, it was fine. Don't. Oh. oh, I thought you were saying something. My bad. No, so, what were you saying? Were you saying moms? Were you? Yeah, I'm just trying to be American because they're nicking our catchphrases. Remember. <laughs> <laughs> I could have literally said Big Mama House, but that would have been even too. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great movie, by the way. That's not very underrated. Okay. Number number three is the worst. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> anyway, I need to watch look, just because. Go on, batch back some English because you've got English peop- family over here. Oh no, nah, it's all gravy. <laughs> I literally was talking. I was literally talking to Gary. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> he's gonna kill me after this. I know he is. He calls me a wanker every time when we sign off. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting to hear. Yeah, I was just gonna. Say it. Cool. Oh, no, I say it. Yeah. Say it. No. No. Say it. no. Maybe at the All end. Right. All right. Oh. We'll hold it to. We'll hold you to. It. Main <laughs> event of the evening. <laughs> <laughs> but we look to the seventh match of the last one of the basically the way they've organized it on. Um, but this one I'm really intrigued about because you've got a mixture of both styles. Yeah, fair enough, you're leading to something that I feel pointless having silverware, well, strap, belt, whatever the class it has, but it could elevate so many people in this match. You got Lana and Naomi. Um, Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose uh, Riot Squad Liv Mor- basically Liv Morgan and Ruby Riot Natalia and Tamina number one, whoever wins this one is going to be the number one contenders for the WWE Women's Main Roster Women's Tag Team title so my half one off when I say Main Roster as well because I'm used yeah. to because of NXT having their own I'll hand this one over to Cameron. Okay. Um, for this match, I have actually picked Naomi and Lana to actually win this. I have actually gone with Naomi and Lana when I was with uh, Gary last night. And I'm going to still say I think Lana and Naomi because they're actually not that bad of a tag team. They aren't actually like too bad. I know that, again, like, like I said, again, they were thrown together, uh, you know, as a team, you know, to be honest, like they were thrown together because like um, Lana like teamed up with Oscar and all that before that, which was a bit weird. But um, but yeah, but, you know, it's it's. I think yeah, I could see Lana and Naomi actually surprisingly win this and actually go on to face Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax on night two for the Women's Tag Team Championships. And, uh, you know, I think it would be interesting you know, plus as well, you know, with Lana again and having, you know, Miro in AEW. But, you know, so that would be interesting as well if, if she was to win the Women's Tag Team Championships with uh, with Naomi. But, uh, yeah, so I'll say Lana and Naomi. So that's kind of a surprising pick. So I'll go with them to win this Tag Team Turmoil. Okay. And um, for you, Gary. 
Yeah, I'm going with Lan- Lana, <laughs> Lana <laughs> and Naomi. I, I like, I, know. I like the chemistry. Uh, chemistry, and I'm all tied up. I like the chemistry together. Um, I like the way they come on. I like their entrance. I like their TikToks. You know what? What guy doesn't? You know, I like their, you know, the social right. media stuff. But I, I think I think they gel together compared to the other teams in there. You know, the Riot Squad, of course, they, they work well together. But I, I like the chemistry and. They're they're over right now. I think after Lana took her punishment with those tables by Naya, I think she's they're, they're kind of ready to push her a little bit. So I'm going with Lana and Naomi, and um, ready to fill the glow. Or, <laughs> that's it. Mm-hmm. Over to you, Brian. All right, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna turn into a fancy booker real quick. All right, this is what's gonna happen before the match. Before the match happens, Lana's gonna be walking backstage trying to do a TikTok, right? And her ankle's gonna hurt. And she's going to roll it, all right? So she can't be in the match. And then Naomi, somebody's going to steal her weave. So they're out of the match. And, you know, Adam Pierce has got to find someone to replace these two women. So he said, what I decided to do is take a young lady from Raw and a young lady from SmackDown and put them together to make a tag team. And all of a sudden, you hear the greatest music of all time at WrestleMania. <clears throat> Iconic! And have the Iconics walk out. And they just run through everybody. And they... Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So you have the icons come out, and then they end up winning the match, and they go to night two, and then they win that one too, and then stay undefeated at WrestleMania. All right. I'm doing all that. I'm doing that right there just for all the UWO fans because that's probably not going to happen. But damn it, I had to represent for my girls. But no, um, in all actuality, I, I 100% agree with with uh, with Gary. Uh, I I love the Riot Squad. I, I'm a huge Liv Morgan fan. Uh, I like I love Ruby Wright. I think she's so underrated in that company. Um, yeah. With all due respect to the other girls, I feel like Lana and Naomi are just on like, like popularity wise, they're hitting every check mark. Uh, Lana has improved a lot in the ring, and Lana is a girl that I think gets a really bad reputation because of just her looks. If you really yeah. think about it, uh, Cameron, I know you could probably att- attest to this too. It, we discussed this earlier. It's very difficult to get in that ring and train and to do what they do. And Lana has never been a person to complain about what's going on. She pay, She's paying her dues, dealing with Nia Jackson, going through those tables every week for nine straight weeks. And, and, and it can't be easy. Oh, go ahead. It can't be easy, though. Yeah, not at all. So, you know what I mean? So... Me personally, I feel like it's going to be a reward. And plus, I also think that Naomi, when she came back at the Rumble, had such a nice little buzz about her that people were starting to reinvest in Naomi. And I think her and Lana would be like a nice little tag team. And I wouldn't be shocked based and just based on the entrance alone, that glow entrance. If you guys ever had the opportunity to see it live, it looks just as cool as it does on television. So I wouldn't be shocked if they gave these girls the win for night one. Fair enough. It's like when you take about that entrance. Believe you me, I have to close my eyes because it hurts my eyes. It gives me a headache. Mm-hmm. But it's like one. I'm going to say a really good tag team right here. But before you, before anyone says this, don't judge me on this. You had to get the iconics in. You had to. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I did. Okay, first off, they were undefeated at WrestleMania. Second of all, they were the greatest women's tag team champions of all time. Third of all, uh, they're beautiful. Fourth of all, they're beautiful. Fifth of all, <laughs> Billy Kay got a resume. All right? So, yes, I rep for my girls, the Iconics. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Talk that talk. talk That's that right. Talk. That's right. We Iconic fans over here. <laughs> How Except much did Freddy. you... I bet he's been itching since he's bought that... He's got a new toy. He's got that soundboard, and he's so happy. Yeah. He's like a little kid on Christmas. Yeah. And the the weird thing is, I, I was one. expecting at least a tumbleweed or Wild West sort of theme kicking off. <laughs> yeah, you, you didn't get the shame. expansion pack. I have it. I have that on here. <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise! I'll probably get done for copyrights now because everyone's got the clap. Oh yeah, <laughs> the clap. <laughs> do you do you guys see the clap over there? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Gotcha. We are. <laughs> All right. But lucky yeah, it's not we'll... copyrighted on my channel. No, I was... Cameron, it's called a joke. At least one thing, it's better than sounds that pumped out on WWE product. Well, okay. yeah. Can I throw a trivia question out real quick before we continue? Go on. Go on. Go on. 
What what wrestler had the gimmick of the clap? Uh, is this to all of us? Or anybody who wants I have no... Um, a clap. Uh... He, was, he was trying to get it over. <laughs> Probably his oh. leg over. <laughs> I don't know. You, you, you say, Brian. All right. It was Scotty Anton, a.k.a. Scotty Riggs, when he was in ECW. Okay. Yeah, this is a little fun fact. We're talking about the clap, so yeah. I'm just throwing that out there. But anyway, back to... <laughs> <laughs> normal life. It's a whale form being the marks. Um, I'm going to throw one swerve that I literally see uh, Natalia and Tamina winning this because all of a sudden you see Paul Heyman doing what he did with Natalia and mm-hmm. Tamina yeah. to Ooh. elevate him to the next level just to give that spice effect. Every time when mm-hmm. Paul Heyman shoots his shit, he, no word of a lie, how many times do you see him pop up from um, talking smack? How many times? Every time when he said something that you think, oh, that's out of line. But he's yeah. getting them over. He's making them worthwhile. So if he's lit the spark, he's the one who's technically made these belts relevant. Sorry to the Iconics, but true. So I think they're going to be number one contenders going forward from night one. And that's the end of night one. Bloody hell. I was oh. we're halfway there. Living on a prayer. I'm not oh. <laughs> I thought Gary was gonna burst out to the song. He's like, I don't listen to that white trash music. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't that? make a you, you know us, you know us, we'll break out into song right now. Oh god, here we go. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Even though he's banned from Buffalo because um, he, he tried to do something <laughs> shady with the Bills, so he can never come back to Buffalo because we'll 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 fuck him up. Excuse my language. <laughs> I thought he was break. I was literally waiting for Brian to break into a song. No, 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 no. I will say this: yeah. one of my favorite, one of my favorite European matches, like comedy matches, they yeah. broke out into that song prior to it starting. It was Colt Cabana versus a guy that used to be known as Beef Wellington. Yeah. Okay. There was actually a guy called Rockstar Spud, aka Drake Maverick, used that theme music. Did he really? Okay. Yep. If you look up Rockstar Spud on YouTube, you'll he he was actually a comic book character. You probably have seen and with Spud sort of stuff that mm. he was doing with Impact Wrestling. Yep. So he was similar to that, but he was he was he used to call him himself. Which I'm glad he changed his name because it will offend a lot of people. He used to call him the baby Jesus of professional wrestling. Oh, okay. <laughs> and you know how PC this world is. That so is if you true. look if you look at his early stuff and all that like they're on YouTube, you'll burst out laughing. I'm about to Google that, some of that. I gotta he, check that out. He literally can cut a promo out of nothing and let alone make it funny. Because I went to one show, uh, two people didn't turn up. So he was thrown into a mixed match with, you guys may know her as Nikki Cross. Now, this day and age, I watched that, I was in tears. He says, I don't want to face her, she's a girl and everything. And he was acting like he was terrified of a spider. That's how comic genius he is. (laughs) <laughs> I feel like hard truth, the amount, but the British version. Okay, okay, nice. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'll link you guys that match if it's on YouTube. Seriously, you would f- find it funny. It was, it was the same night that I saw Nigel McGuinness retirement tour. I you would like to see if you ever see the last of Nigel McGuinness documentary he made. Mm-hmm. You see me slightly in the front row. Are you talking about the independent version that he made, or the one yeah, that WWE the did? Independent one. The independent okay, one. I, I actually, I actually have seen the independent one too. Okay. All right. Okay. So it's like goodness of his heart. Before he released it, I messaged him because I'm friends with him on Facebook. I says I'm looking forward to seeing your documentary and everything. He says, "Oh, much appreciated." He says, "Oh, what's your address?" I told him my address, and it's before you know, a week later, he sent me a copy, signed. 
Oh, that's awesome. Oh, wow. I've still got it in my collection. And it says, uh, kiss the flaggy slag on it. Ah. <laughs> One of these known catchphrases from Oral <laughs> Wasting. <laughs> yeah, he, to be fair, like he was funny in TNA. He was actually funny though in, in Impact as well. Yeah, the only reason why he went to TNA, if I remember, he had a slight injury. He was going to WWE in the first place. Yeah, and then they couldn't sign him because he's picked up that slight injury. They were worried about, so they didn't sign him. Okay, I didn't know later, the backstory. Yeah, it's in the documentary. Okay. So, in, long story short, Impact Wrestling signed him. And it's yeah. come full circle for him because well, he yeah. literally had um, hepatitis C, if I recall. Yeah. Oh. That's why they didn't sign him. Mm-hmm. I remember that tour, too. When he was leaving like from Ring of Honor itself, yeah. everyone was hyped that he was going to WWE. It was like he, he was going to be a perfect fit. And then to hear that he failed the, um, the physical and then ended up going to Impact, it was like... Impact's cool, but man, if Nigel went to WWE right off Ring of Honor, oh, that guy would have been huge. Yeah. He oh, would have been huge there. I think that's the reason why they brought the likes of Boy Barrett to like cover where they couldn't get a British guy. Yep. That's what I feel. Uh, yeah. That's how I feel. And um, if I remember rightly, that Daniel Bryan was signed at the same time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The same year. The massive, just think that massive loss. Two big guys from Ring of Honor. That and I was, I was actually a part of the tour, uh, the final countdown tour. It was literally both of their like final shows. I went to the one right before their last show. It was in Boston, um, and Brian fought Davy Richards. I think I forgot who Nigel fought. It might have been Hero, Chris Hero. But, uh, but yeah, no, seeing those two guys leaving uh, Ring of Honor, I was so hyped for Nigel, man. But, oh, uh, that, that, that failed test just, just ruined, like, like, people don't understand who didn't watch Nigel in his prime, how great of a wrestler this man was. Yeah. And to see the guy that he is now, and it, and it sucks, too, because I feel like he could probably still get in that ring and go with anybody, but... You know, but because of health reasons, he, he won't even risk it. Like, he could do it, but he's like, I'm better off as a commentator now. But if if fans only knew how great of a champion Nigel was for Ring of Honor and what he did around the independent scene, let alone in America, I could just imagine what it was like over there in the UK. Like, yeah. the dude the dude would have been huge. He would have been the next British Bulldog with a world title he run. Probably, yeah, I think he probably would all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I mean. It's like when we talked off, like off this recording, when we said when Brian said that's his favorite match, Daniel Bryan and, um, versus Nigel McGuinness. Yep, unified. Match, so that's what I mean. It's insane. So that's what I mean. It's like I see a lot of similarities towards Brian. You probably Daniel. I mean, where. I was going to say this, that you probably see there's a lot of similarities with Cesaro's gimmick. Could have been where Nigel McGuinness says, yeah. that's that's how I see it going forward. Even though he's the Swiss guy or whatever you want to class him as now, I don't know what he goes under. But I, don't, I don't think he's got a name anymore. But but anyway, that's what, that's what I mean. I had to bring that up and... On to night two, which everyone's going to be sitting there with on the hands waiting to be intim- intimidation. Is that the word that's correctly to use? But I digress. But we go on to the first match that has been on Wikipedia. I keep mentioning Wikipedia, I don't know why. But it's like Roman Reigns versus Edge versus Daniel Bryan for the triple threat for the U- Universal Championship. We'll hand this one over to Bryan. Ooh, this one to me, it's like I'll say this: Edge is not in my world title picture after Mania. Unfortunately for me, I don't think he needs a world title. He's a big enough name, and I feel like this run for him shouldn't be about holding a championship. It should be about building up the next generation. So it really comes down to: Do we go with Roman or do we go with Brian? Now, for me. Roman would be the safe bet because he's been so dominant since he's returned that I love his character and I don't want them to change it at all. But at the same time, 
I feel like his character has held the title for so long that maybe it's time for that character to get a little bit more aggressive because he's been playing the calm, cool guy. But when he gets aggressive, he gets very aggressive. Like he goes, from, like we say in America, zero to 100 real quick. So I would love to see Roman chase the title a little bit. And for me, it's like, I feel like Brian would be a smart pick for WWE because he could rekindle that story with Roman whenever he wants. And also maybe continue the feud with Edge and give that story a little bit more life at the same time having all three of those guys still in the main event scene. So my pick, and I know I'm bold for saying this, I'm going to go with Daniel Bryan to win this one. Just don't sit highlights from everyone, I guess. That was actually really surprising. But at the moment, I feel like, yeah, he's over at the moment with all the memes that's going over. But that's what I mean. It's like as soon as he's put himself in that sort of predicament, mm-hmm. if people are not backing him, why are they making so much effort to put him all in these memes that he's jumped into so many films as a triple threat? Or mm-hmm. so, so that's what I mean. He's made himself as technically the new people's champion once again which is quite funny, and it's not been planned that way, but it is how it is. Well, I'll hand this one over to Gary. Yes, yeah, so uh, Cameron and I, we had a great talk last night. So uh, <laughs> me, initially, I didn't, I didn't know where they, what, you know, put my fantasy booking hat on. I'm not sure how to really, I, I wasn't sure what they could do, so I said Daniel Bryan as well. I think Daniel Bryan's going to win. I feel like that Roman character, the head of the table, it's so over right now that he doesn't need the title to keep that going. So, like Bryan said, I could see him chasing the title. So, I have Roman losing. Jimmy comes back, and it's almost like a power struggle where he has to wrestle his cousins to keep him in line for them to him gain his respect back. So... While they're doing yeah, you know, Roman can be in the background, kind of do his thing, you know, helping Jimmy and get back and Jay get back, you know. And Daniel Bryan has the title. But I feel like Daniel Bryan would owe it to Edge to have that one-on-one moment, that WrestleMania moment, you know, that they did to get at Mania, you know. So, and that would be like a SummerSlam thing where it's Daniel Bryan, Edge, you know, main, main event SummerSlam. And... That way, Daniel Bryan gets his, you know, WrestleMania moment, another run at the title. Then Edge, you know, he'll get his title moment at SummerSlam, yeah? If they gave it the, the title to Goldberg, they can give it to Edge. He can have at least the defense or two. And that way, by time more fans get back in, I feel like that'd be good for the company because more fans would be back in by time then. And eventually, we could get some more dream matches. We can get Edge against Seth Rollins. We could get Edge against AJ, you know, those yes. matches, those, those are mm-hmm. title worthy matches. You're not going to do it on the Raw or anything like that. So that's why I feel like, you know, all the while, Edge, you know, he'll get a title run. He could lose it to one of those guys. Then here comes Roman to come back around again to come back and get the title in the back end at some point in time. But then we're paying musical champion, and I'm not sure if WWE is willing to do that. But long story short, I got Daniel Bryan winning at Mania. Oh, yeah. I thought that was one of your number of soundboards then when you're here the creek. <laughs> <laughs> Over to you, Cameron. Um, yeah, um, I'm actually going for Roman to retain. I'm actually going against what you're all saying. And I think Roman is going to stay the head of the table. I think Roman is going to actually hold on because I know, well, again, he's got the odds against him here. But again, it's not like that he has to, again, be pinned to lose the title. But, you know, but I think like, yeah, I think definitely, you know, last year, WrestleMania, I think, you know, did uh, miss Roman Reigns' presence as well because there were so many guys that were out last year for for Mania. Well, because of the, again, the pandemic and and all that, that, you know, that I think uh, they definitely lacked it, lacked a little bit when Roman wasn't there last year for, for WrestleMania. So, it's good that he's back, you know, this year again. I think he, he has made this WrestleMania actually better. And that it's, uh, you know, to see him, you know, as a, you know, as a full-timer as well and not getting part-timers back either it just shows you the caliber now that Roman Reigns is at in terms of how far he's gone. 
um, in this la in the last few months since he turned heel, which is when he's been, uh, you know, getting a lot better. But uh, yeah, but I think in terms of this match, I'm really looking forward to this match. Like we haven't even talked about the match itself, but I think that this match is going to be arguably again like one of the best main events i think in wrestlemania history which i said to, to gary last night if this can go really well if if all three guys can can have good chemistry we already know that brian and reigns you know have the chemistry in the ring but i mean you add you know again just you know again different scenarios you add edge into that with brian mixing it up with brian and with reigns you know at once is is going to be cool and i think that's a treat and I hope that they, they do actually have, you know, Edge and Brian as well have, you know, a good exchange, uh, you know, in the match more so. Because I know, again, like I said, we want to see it one on one between Brian and Edge at some point. Uh, again, like Gary alluded to it, say at a SummerSlam or somewhere like that down the line. But, but I think, again, we're going to get a taste of it at Mania of what they can do in the triple threat match. But uh yeah, so I'm really looking forward to the match. And also, I am, you know, I'm not against Daniel Bryan being in this match either because, I, you know, at first, like I said, it's so, you know, it's so, again, fickle for fans again to, to again, to turn on Daniel Bryan and all that. And, like, a lot of people were saying before this that Daniel Bryan didn't deserve to, to main event, you know, WrestleMania, you know, and be involved with, with Edge and Roman. But I think he elevates this match. I think he makes it better just having him you know, in there with Edge and Roman. Because, again, we don't know how Edge is going to wrestle with Roman. And we don't know how, like, they're going to gel. So, you know, I think having just Daniel Bryan in there is a safe bet. And because, like Gary said, you know, Spear versus Spear is kind of, you know, you don't just want to see a Spear versus Spear, uh, sh you know, showdown. So, you know, which is always, which is what fans wanted to see more. But, yeah, so I think the match is going to be good. But I see Roman uh, retaining here. Uh, I mean, Jay could get involved again. We could see Jay Uso's presence again, though, in this triple threat. But, but I, you know, but I think Roman's gonna, you know, retain. I think he is gonna pin Daniel Bryan and uh, and hold on to the Universal Championship. But again, I think Bryan has got a chance to win. But I'm, I'm just surprised because I wouldn't have said this a few months ago, like Daniel Bryan, you know, winning. But he's really kind of. You know, um, again, like what Gavin's saying, it's just surprising how he's just, again, now that people, again, think he has a chance to, to win the Universal Championship. But I'm, I'm going to say Roman, but uh, I think this match is going to be the highlight of WrestleMania, one of the highlights again. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like with um, myself, I've said this before, that I wouldn't mind... If this was a singles match, Edge versus Daniel Bryan, because they both came back from the same injury, because that would have been so much of a better thing. Because Roman don't need the title; he's got Paul Heyman. He's the one that's elevated him. And remember when people used to complain, Roman Reigns is thrown down our throats left, right, and centre. But as soon as he's turned heel, he's been thrown down our throats even more, because <laughs> Paul Heyman has made it legitimately look legit it, it proves that Paul Heyman can work with the right people at the right time but when I look at this match it's so wide open you could go either one way or another but I personally feel the way the right, the way Edge has been with Daniel Bryan saying this ain't like you etc like that I want fire I want fire sort of scenario I literally feel that Daniel Bryan's going to get this and they, them two are going to face off. Poss is it Extreme Rules next? Uh, is it? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. But that's I that's what like, I mean. With, with so that, many pay-per-views, you don't realise right, which one's coming up right. next. Yeah. But but, yeah work Goldberg in. is like... You quote Goldberg? How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Goldberg. It's going to be Goldberg and Edge at Extreme Rules for the title. Oh, oh God, so no. No, 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 no. Do not put that in our, <laughs> our universe, please. If that happens, we'll come get, riot. We'll riot. We'll tweet our displeasure. 
But yeah, I'm going to have to train some Roman, but not Goldberg. Uh, <laughs> but that's what I mean. It's so wide open this match. I've got no way it's going to go. I think this is going to possibly one of the best nights, not on night two, matches that you're going to get. Because you've got all the different variations of the type, uh, styles that you've got. And we know full well Edge can actually do something. But in a way, I see with Edge at the moment, I don't see him coming out on this, no disrespect to any Edge heads out there, that this is technically, I feel, is the first match that he's actually in with if of his whole career that hasn't had a stipulation apart from the triple threat or freeway, whatever you want to class it as. I don't class that as a stipulation. This could be the first ever match that he's actually going to win something, if he does, that doesn't have a stipulation. Oh, that's wow. Not, that's how I see it, because you look at what he's known for, TLC. John Zena and um, feuding with John Zena. How many you had TLC there? You had literally everything, but it's going to be an interesting thing to see what Edge can actually pull off. What was his match like when he became returned back from Randy Orton? A stipulation. Interesting. That's what I mean. It's, that's how you, that's how I feel into this match. If Edge actually wins this, this will prove all the haters that Edge can do something. But I want Daniel Bryan to win this so they can have a blow-off match between them two where Edge comes out and goes, that's the Daniel Bryan that I wanted to see like on Monday night. Sorry, is it SmackDown or Raw? Is that... Smack, SmackDown. 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 I'm losing. I'm literally because I'm used <laughs> to seeing him on Raw when he was the rated R superstar. Yeah. Now he's the rated PG superstar. <laughs> but but uh, then you look at that way that I want to see him the not the SmackDown on the Friday after WrestleMania. And go look, that's the one I wanted. That's why you've got the title. Now I'm coming for the title, sort of thing. Yeah. So, because then you've got Roman Reigns out of the way. He's got Paul Heyman. He elevated him regardless, like you guys have said. So I want Daniel Bryan to win this to, so they, they can have that thing. Don't forget, Edge is in the Hall of Fame. He, the reason why he's in the Hall of Fame, not because of his injury, people saying, oh, he's too soon to go in. He's had legendary matches with stipulations, not as a single That's- wrestler. That's just, but that's what I mean. I want Daniel Bryan to win that one. Next match, I feel is going to be a clinic of a match because they're both hard hitting. Is no other than Asuka versus Rhea Ripley for the women's championship on SmackDown. I'll hand this one over to Gary first off. All right. So this one, I have uh, F Asuka losing. I mean, COVID has not been good to her, and you know, in 2020 it hasn't been any better. I think she needs to disappear for a while and come back, you know, refreshed and have the fans miss her a little bit. Um, so I do have her losing to Rhea Ripley. I feel like that's going to create some some different matchups and some some interesting storylines. And this also gives Asuka some time to get her teeth fixed because the stuff she has it now is fake. You know, in, in order to get surgery done, it's going to take some time to heal. So this would be a good time to keep her off TV. So with my my booking prowess, I lack thereof. I have her, Rhea Ripley winning. Asuka disappear for a while. Rhea keeps it for a while until you know Becky Becky Lynch returns. You know they they have a little program together. Then by the time Mania comes around next year, Asuka come back, wins the Rumble, and then they'll go back on from there. By the time then Becky Lynch will have the title, then it'll be the match that we never that we never got. Because last time we saw Becky, she gave the title to Asuka. Now they actually right. have a match for it. So long-term booking, that's the way I look at it. Um, Asuka deserves a break. You know, she deserves a break. And, you know, we can't forget about, you know, our favorite, you know, the the queen of pro wrestling, Charlotte. You know, they have to figure her, figure her the way to get in there. And it makes it a little easier for Charlotte to get to the top without Asuka being there. You know, I love Charlotte. I love a lot of people don't, but I think she's she's good. 
And, you know, but like I said, this is kind of, it'll freshen things up a little bit if Asuka was to go. But it's going to be a hell of a match. It's going to be a good match. And, but our real is going to win the title. Okay, over to you, Cameron. Um, and yeah, I think, uh, again, I think this will be, you know, a good match as well. I think both of the women's matches they've got this year for Mania are good. I'm actually quite surprised as well, though, like how quickly that Rhea Ripley just suddenly got, you know, a title match as well against Oscar. Like it, that just came like really quick as well. But obviously because they had to, you know, give her a match and that, you know, for WrestleMania. But but yeah, I, I'm I'm actually quite glad though that Charlotte, you know, is is not involved though because again, like they can still again have Charlotte again going after the World Women's Championship after you know after WrestleMania anyway, whenever she comes back, you know, which should be any time sort of after Mania. But you know, but um, yeah, but I think uh, it's going to be interesting. I mean, I didn't like what they did trying to again team Rhea, Rhea, Rhea Ripley and. Oscar together against Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler because again it's like you're taking away from trying to you know get people excited to see Oscar and, and Rhea Ripley and, and all that and they were having them like again in a tag team match against uh, Nia Jax and that did nothing like for either of them so that was kind of pointless to be honest I, I don't know what you thought about that Gavin well the tag team match it was just nonsense yeah so I, I just, you're, you're pretty much building up WrestleMania and you are putting that two weeks before WrestleMania. That's what, I'm, you, that's what I'm saying. It's like I just didn't get that. It was just really weird to me. But yeah, but in terms of like going on to Mania here and having, you know, Rip, Ray Ripley and, and Oscar, I think this is going to be a good match. I, I think that Bianca and Sasha is just slightly going to i think you know deliver more in my opinion because i'm looking more forward to that one slightly than this one but i still think again this is going to be you know a, a great you know match for, for ray ripley and again for a second wrestlemania i mean she's facing oscar this year last year it was charlotte you know that ripley faced for the nxt women's title so she's really Again, been getting two like major opponents here at, at WrestleMania, so she can't complain about that. So, but but yeah, yeah but I I actually see um, Ripley winning. I'm going to say I think Rhea Ripley again is going to win. Like Gary said, I think Rhea Ripley is going to take the belt off Oscar off Oscar, and then she might you know take a break. I think she might take a back seat. So I'm going to say Ripley wins. Interesting. Over to you, Brian. All right. Uh, for me, uh, this is a matchup that I am personally not tr- too invested in, uh, and that takes nothing away from the two girls that are in the match because I love both of them. I'm a huge fans of both of them. But here, here's like two little fun facts. Right, first fun fact: Asuka hasn't had a singles pay per view title defense of that title in almost eight months. That's the first thing we should look at. Second thing: the storyline going into this match. Do you guys realize during a three-week span of time, WWE gave us the same storyline over and over again where a tag team champion yeah, go, goes against a world champion and their competitor coming up yeah. towards WrestleMania? It's like, stupid. It, it's, so, it's so lazy booking that I, like, like as a fan, yeah, don't get me, excuse me, don't get me wrong. I'm excited to see these two go at it. But as a like a person who follows the storylines to WWE, it's like, why should I give a damn about this match? Yeah. Rhea Ripley just showed up, said, I want a title shot. I'm getting a title shot. Beats the crap out of Asuka. And then what do you know? The tag team champions appear and challenge them to a match. It's not like they didn't just have a just tag team title match versus the SmackDown Women's Champion and her contender at WrestleMania, or how NXT had the tag team champions go against Finn Balor and Karrion Cross the same week. You know what I mean? It's like, it's lazy, lazy booking by WWE. But to give an answer to the question, I'm going to go with Rhea Ripley to win the title because everything that uh, my two cohorts just before me just stated, uh, Asuka's probably going to have surgery. They got to get her away. And it gives Rhea Ripley that strong, like, strike while the iron's hot push. Yeah. I see what you mean. It's like, I won't mind Rhea Ripley winning this, mm. but 
I feel like I'm quoting Brian here. Fun fact, who was the last two in the Women's Royal Rumble this year? Bianca and Rhea. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It maps, it maps out itself. That was a good backup plan because of obviously, in quotations, I would say it, because apparently Charlotte had COVID, which I do not believe at all. Because I think that's just a cover story with her personal life that's going off. Yeah, because I thought that was a bit random when they announced that. They also yeah. said she was pregnant. Yeah. That was the other Say one. Which one is it? I had no idea they said she was pregnant. Yeah, they told her that she was pregnant. And like I guess when Andrade gave his like um his uh shoot interview with Hugo Savinovich, um pretty much he told them that WWE let her know that her like levels were up. And they were very elevated to the point where they thought she was pregnant. So that's one of the reasons why they pulled her off the road. That's why we haven't seen her in a couple of weeks. But she says that she's been home. She's done tons of pregnancy tests and she's not even pregnant. I had no idea. That's crazy. Yeah, this is a, it's a crazy story that's going on with her. That's what I mean. It's like this at the moment with all the controversy backstage. I feel like it's the same way Paige was actually treated. When she failed the drugs test or whatever it was. The mm-hmm. only reason why, if I remember rightly, she failed the drugs test because she got stuck in traffic and she was only 10 miles away and she was late for it. So they automatically failed her for it. Yeah. That's the same scenario. That's how I see the same scenario at the moment. And I think a lot of Charlotte's going to get a lot of stick, believe it or not, because she's with Andrade. They're engaged to get married and all that lot. Because it's going to be the same scenario that Lana did, but she's managed to come through that for loops and circles because she's with obviously Andrew, um, sorry, Rusev and Miro in AEW. I was surprised that she got a bit of backlash through the storylines that she's actually had, but she's come out fighting fit through that, which is insane. I'm surprised that they didn't blackball her. Completely like the way they're treating Charlotte at the moment. That's what I, I feel. But the only way I feel that Charlotte's going to come back is probably after that title, after Rhea Ripley's after it. But that would still make no sense going forward. What about the other women that slaved their way for how many weeks on end? Even though the Rhea Ripley's got. Like, yeah, she- it's like she gets like royalty, Charlotte, a little bit. She gets treated differently, but I know she's not. But yeah, she's the highest paid woman. She gets three hundred k a year. That's what I'm saying. You should treat. I, I'm going off topic. I know, but I've stressed this before. I think I've said it to Brian in the past that you should treat the roster equally, pay them the same equally. If you make any percentage of your merch sales and everything, that's fine. Agreed. But don't, don't like look at Sasha. I think she's on 150k when Charlotte's getting double because she's Ric Flair's daughter. And when mm. she when she did recently come back, how green did she look? She looked awful yeah. in that ring. She was sloppy. Mm-hmm. She's lost a touch because she's not been on the week. This is when I don't like when COVID's hit the United States and worldwide quite bad. Wrestlers need these house shows to elevate themselves, to get the fans, etc. But when she's wrestling now, once, maybe twice a week when she's on screen, if you're lucky, it's making her rusty, making her look bad. I remember her whole idea was originally, she's doing this for Reed. Now she's like, she's trying to be, because she's got let her ego get to her head. And that's how I feel. But when you look at this match, like you guys have said, I feel this is going to be a good match if they let them go like NXT style. And I'm looking forward to seeing who comes out on this one. I personally want Rhea Ripley to win this one. Oh, boy. I know I'll go slightly off topic, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> but you had to woo, didn't you? Is that, or is that one of your uh, soundboards? <laughs> No, that, that was me. <laughs> oh, okay. I can't Don't even we... do it voice, but <laughs> to be the I can't do Rick Floyd's voice at all because my throat's <laughs> dry. I sound like Marlon Brando. <laughs> my voice is dry a bit. Yeah, so we go on to the next match with the fiend with Alyssa Bliss versus Randy Orton. This is apparently billed as a singles match. 
which I personally find pointless when you could do something with this one. I will hand this one over to Brian. Alrighty, well, really quick, gents. Uh, after this one, I must uh, bid you all adieu. Uh, the missus is calling me, and it's almost dinner time. Um, <laughs> but I, I will give my thoughts on this match. We were talking about this uh, prior to the recording of this, and I am surprised that this match isn't a Firefly Funhouse match. Um, to me, it I, I see something tricky happening at the end of this match. Like, I'm going with The Fiend. But the the video package that continuously be is that's being played by WWE right now, Alexa Bliss keeps saying the Legend Killer will die. So it's something that is is pretty much foreshadowing to me that the Fiend's going to win the match. It's just about how are they going to end this, and this is why I thought this match should have been a Firefly Funhouse match because you could have wrote Randy Orton off television for a little while, similar to how you wrote off John Cena last year. You could have had him go through like they could have actually fought and then go through the Firefly Funhouse and Randy see some things and like you know messes with his mind and ultimately he disappears. You know, Bray does his little vanishing act. Um, I also feel that you know I know there's been rumors and the rumors have quote unquote been debunked that Bo Dallas is actually currently playing the burnt version of the Fiend, but I've said it on our show. Uh, the Fiend needs a really strong win. And they need to reestablish this character to the ump degree, to the point where I even said on our show that I need to see a Bray Wyatt versus Fiend match. And, mm. you know, just to keep that story alive, because the Fiend is a very delicate character. I don't feel like they've handled it properly with this guy, especially with the whole Goldberg situation that occurred last year. But the Fiend needs this win and needs a big dramatic win, especially because, you know, WWE just used their entire budget on setting the guy on fire, quote unquote. But you know what I mean? Like you did something like that and it's WrestleMania. So you're going to have to pull out something big. And just in my, just in my eyes, I would have to have to go with the fiend or did a great job this year. And I will always say this, a motivated Randy Orton is one of the best things in pro wrestling. And I could tell in this, yeah, with right, him and Bray Wyatt, it's it's he's on he's working on a different level right now. So um, unfortunately, like I said, I I do have to run you guys. Uh, this has been awesome, Gavin. Oh. I got to do this again whenever you have another yeah. opportunity to have me on. Trust me, I will do it. Yeah, no problem. Hopefully, so, you bring the boys as well. Yes, uh, their their work schedule is very difficult to get around, but uh, whenever I can get them on, trust me, I will I will do my best to relay the message and get them on here because yeah, you, no I know you, I know you'll have fun with them too. Oh wait, buy him, yep. buy him, wait. Yep, yep. Banker. Oh, he said it! Yay! <laughs> it took almost three hours, one minute, and 51 <laughs> seconds, but he damn it, said it. said, Wanker. Yes! Wanker. <laughs> I did it twice. Just but for Cameron, you, just made his night. <laughs> thank you. Oh, for real, you just made my night. No, uh, Cameron, it was a pleasure meeting you. Uh, oh, you are you. awesome. I would love to work with you again. Um, oh, thank Hus- you. Yeah, I'll see you around. Husky, you the man, you know that. Thank you. So plus and oh, that's right, you are our plus one. And Gavin, as always, <laughs> it's an honor and a privilege to get to know you, to know you, to work with you, and having me on the show was a great, great time, sir. No problem. Anytime. All right, I will catch y'all later. No problem. So obviously, if you like Brian what he has to offer, you can always check out the link down below towards their podcast and everything. So, who to hand this one to? I'll hand this one over to Gary. You know, with me, I'm I'm not excited about this match. Um, you know, they have to, they have the Fiend looking like a toxic Avenger. You know, so I mean, and once again, like, wh- where are we going after this? Okay, the Fiend wins, then what? Randy wins, then what? You know, and. In my opinion, everybody loses, you know. Now, unless they're going to go... Now, I'm going to see some cool effects. Stuff like that, you know. I really want it to be like a trauma movie, you know. If you're going to go all the way with these shenanigans, you just, just go all the way with it, you know. But, I mean, to me, they already botched, they already ruined the thing. So, for me, it doesn't matter to me, but Hopefully, I want 
I want Randy to win just for the simple fact that uh you know just so it, it just so the, the fiend can be over that way they can bring Ray back a different way. Hopefully um you know go back to the old Bray. I miss the uh you know the old Bray with the you know uh the buzzards, the whole buzzards thing. I I like that one better. So hopefully they can come back to that. So I highly doubt it, but we'll see. So who's going to get the victory? Uh, Randy Orton. Okay. Cameron? Um, I would just, yeah, I'll quickly just say I reckon that I'm going to, I'm just going to quickly come out with it and say I think The Fiend will win this match. Just again, to cut this one short, because I did speak a little bit about this with Gary last night. And I actually think after this, that like what uh, Brian said, I think Randy may need to go and just take a bit of a break now. I think, like I said, he, you know, he's had like a, a great, you know, 2020 and all that. He had a great, you know, year last year with, with, when Edge came back and that re-motivated Randy Orton. And like what Brian said, when Randy Orton's motivated, there's nobody better than when Orton's like that. There's n- nobody better that, than, than Orton that, that delivers, you know, the type of promos, the type of, you know, backstage promos that, that he delivers or and, and that he can cut. So, but yeah, I just think like this whole thing with The Fiend, it has been a little bit, you know, dragging now. It's been dragging on like for, for a while. And so I'm getting a bit tired of it. I just, I do want it to end because I think, again, they need to just move away. I think Orton's going to take a break after Mania because, again, of, of just how hard he's worked. I could be wrong, but... I just think, you know, Orton can take a break after this. And and again, if like what Brian was saying, like maybe Orton might get killed or he might get burnt or something crazy might happen. Who knows? I don't think that's going to really happen. But, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm a bit confused. It's a singles match because I think a Firefly Funhouse match would have made sense for this one. But yeah, I'm just going to say that, that Bray Wyatt wins and uh, I think Orton takes a break. Yeah. It's like with me, it's like when you guys say about the Fireflies match, yeah, I wouldn't mind something like that because what he did with Xena and all that lot. But you thought they could actually be continuing on this story to extreme rules. Because that's another setting that could fit perfectly. But I'm hoping to do something interesting. I'm very controversial with this because I love my horror films, even though I don't have many in my Blu ray collection. The, the way I see traits of the horror characters over the rest of the industry, it's like I've seen the likes of Kane a lot in The Fiend when he came back. I see a lot of Taker in him. I see the lot of it in this inspired wrestlers that in the past, even nailed some way or form. You look at the We're way okay. he... What's that? I said, okay, sorry. All oh, right, fair enough. So then you look at the horror characters that take a bit of his character over. That's where it's built up on to like so the Fiend at the moment. I'm not bored of this. It's kept me interested and it's kept me glued to watching clips of the likes of Alyssa Bliss reinventing herself. I never thought... I've got a feeling this weren't originally aimed for her. I think the, only, the, only thing, a... sorry, the only thing that's just been weird for me is the black goo that comes out of Orton's mouth. That's the only thing that, yeah. that I find. It's voodoo. It's based. If you ever watch the film The Craft, it's sort of that I sort have... of style. Oh yeah. Well, it's about witchcraft and everything. So that sort of vibe of it, or the twisted spring, spring and teenage witch that's on Netflix, it's got that vibe to it. So that's mm. why I love about this. It's kept me glued to watching clips of it. I'm not watching a whole episode of SmackDown I do admit the Fireball Raw was or cool. whatever the other. Huh? <laughs> no, I do admit that the Fireball was cool when she did that Fireball to Orton's face. That that was pretty cool what Alexa Bliss did to, to Orton yeah. that with... Yeah. He should be still wearing that mask. Yeah, he should. So that, that would have sold it even better. Yeah. yeah. But that's what I mean. You look at the horror characters like Michael Myers, um, Jason, Freddy Krueger, etc. Because the way they built, that's what he's based the character on. 
and he's elevated, obviously, with like the wrestlers, like I've mentioned. And the way they've done this is perfectly for horror fans because they are pushing the boundaries of PG. And I don't mind what they've done with it. It's kept me interested. But like you guys have said, where are you going to go after WrestleMania? Are you going to continue the feud or are you going to go on to someone else out the blue like that? I, I personally think Orton just may need to... I don't know. I just think perhaps... He's just been working so hard for me, Orton. That I just think he deserves a break. I think, like, what we're saying with, Os- with Oscar, like, I think Orton just... I don't know. Like, I, I, I could see it lasting after Mania. It could, but... I don't well, know. What do you that's think, That's what I mean. That's what I mean. It's like, I look at this. Where's it going to go? I mean, what's the end game here, you know? Yeah, it's been long right. storyline. Consistent for once in a long time with WWE. So that's what I mean. It's like I could see the likes of Bray Wyatt win this to get revenge what Orton did. Or it could end up in, you know, in our look, a DEQ, disqualification. But I'm hoping um, Bray Wyatt wins this or The Fiend or whatever you want to class him as. But then we'll go on to the next the next match. <laughs> is... Fiend loses NXT. See, <laughs> <laughs> that's harsh. Come on, man. <laughs> God. And then hey. we we'll got then we got the next match, which I think is another pointless match, which I haven't got a clue what it's gonna entail. Is this gonna be a cinematic match or not? That's the question. Big E versus Apollo Crews in the Nigerian drum fight for the IC Championship. I think this is going to go Cameron. Right. Um, yeah, well, I think hopefully this match is going to hopefully be better than the match at Fastlane because back at their match at Fastlane, that match was short. And uh, it was really kind of weird, that match, the way uh, uh, that, B, um, that Big E... Uh, you know, defeated Apollo quickly and just by a roll up and all that. And it came out of nowhere as well. Like it was a, you know, weird. And then Apollo afterwards attacked Big E and continued again, you know, his, you know, heel run while well, con- establishing himself as a heel as the Nigerian Prince uh, gimmick. Uh, so, but yeah, like I've been liking Apollo again, even more like, uh, I think he's been getting more, you know, better as this feud's gone on. And, um, yeah, so that's all I'm just going to say. Um, but, like, yeah, I think this would definitely be more interesting than the match at Fastlane because I could see this going more either way this time. I wouldn't be opposed to seeing Apollo win or Big E. So, you know, yeah, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I think Big E retains. Okay. Over to you, Gary. Yeah, me, I have... Um... I have Apollo Crews winning because I feel like they're they're gonna do their version of Kofi Mania with Big E. So I got a feeling that they're gonna try to push him more towards, you know, the Universal Title spotlight rather than have him hold on to the to the IC title because um he 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 he's a draw he draw he draws he brings ratings. I'm sure the New Day's merch is still kind of up there in WWE. So I feel like. He'll be a safe guy to work with, no matter if it's Daniel Bryan. I can't see him getting into a program with Edge that much, or if it's Roman. I could see him going either way with either Roman or Daniel Bryan in case however the championship goes. But I got a feeling they're going to try to get him like a bigger push towards the um, the main title. Well, it's, it's like, with me, it's like, I hope Apollo Crews wins this. I hope it's a better match than Fastlane. Because... No disrespect to the Big E. Has he technically broke away from the New Day now? Uh, I think he has at the moment, but I don't know if he has permanently, but... That's what, that's what I mean. It's like how, what, when, or so on. Well, to be honest, I think Big E is better off without the New Day at the moment. I do think he is better without them, but what yeah. do you think, Gary? What's that? Sorry, I, I think 
I think he's good. Like, I don't think he needs the new day either. It's, like the same way Ashley doesn't need to hurt business right now. Biggie doesn't need a new day. And he he's getting over on his own on his charisma and his, his, yeah, his I think he's got charisma, Biggie. So that's what I mean. It's just insane though that I just really want this match to go better than what it is. Because it intrigues me because it's something unique that WWE doesn't do that often. What is he going to entail? That's the thing. But I want Apollo Crews to win this one. Next match is Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn with Logan Paul, the biggest twat on YouTube, other than me. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he's worse than you, Gavin. Oh, I'm not the one who actually I filmed agree. himself in a chat. Have you actually seen the episode where he actually uh, filmed himself in a place in Japan where people were known for killing themselves? No, but I've heard it, it was controversial. Yeah, because in the background someone was hanging themselves. Caught on camera. Uh, and he decided to put it on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if it weren't for KSI, he would no longer be a YouTuber. Scum. I'm saying no. that. You can and see- KSI is better. But... Yeah, because Kevin Sarah has actually revamped his uh, whole career. I actually hope, hope Kevin Owens wins this one. In the words of Brian, this is another ROH match. I know that for a fact. Yep. Because that was it. Great matches yep. in the past, even PWG. Sami Zayn, let's see what he can actually do. But I hope, Kev- in a way, I hope Kevin Owens paces him, even knocks the living shit out of Paul. Logan Paul. <laughs> Over to you, Gary. Yeah, um, this is the reason why I'm upset with this match because I know we're not going to get a PWE, a PDP, PWG <laughs> or ROH style match with these two. I know these guys can go and they know each other very well, so I know they trust each other with their bodies. But throwing Logan Paul in this nonsense is stupid. Um, I do have Sami Zayn winning because Logan Paul is going to do some nonsense, and that's going to lead to a Logan Paul, Kevin Owens match at like SummerSlam or, or something like that. You know what I mean? So, I mean, yeah. to me, it seems like a blow off type of thing. They just need something to do. At times, WWE has so much talent, they kind of just kind of make up stuff on a fly. But this here makes no sense. And of all people, Logan Paul, like you said, Gavin, for those same things, I won't touch him with a ten foot pole. Yeah. It's controversial bringing Logan Paul in. Even though, yeah, he's got a boxing career, mm-hmm. but nobody likes him other than obviously some people in America do. Well, the, here's all, the thing. It's like, yeah, oh. All he's known for at the moment, un- unboxing Pokemon cards. Right. And wasting 30, what was it, <laughs> 300k on a limited edition Pokemon card? Or what was it? Uh, it was a fake. Uh, that was just to wow. get subscribers, but... He's a dumbass anyway. Over to you, Cameron. Uh, yeah, again, I'll quickly, you know, make this one short. You know, yeah, I mean, I'm interested because, again, this is the first time that KO and, and Sammy are both facing each other one-on-one at WrestleMania, like Kevin uh, like Kevin Owen said the other week on SmackDown. But, yeah, again, like, did they need to really bring Logan Paul, you know, into this whole thing with Sammy saying between Sammy saying and Kevin Owens? I think not. I mean, you could have just done without this. You could have just left, you know, Logan Paul out of this because Sami Zayn and, and Kevin Owens, you know, could have just, you know, done with done without uh, Logan Paul. So it, it's just and it's random again. It's like they just literally just announced Logan Paul to mm-hmm. appear on this whole thing with Sami Zayn a few week the other week on SmackDown. This uh, to show his like documentary that he's been doing over the last few weeks on SmackDown, like filming different guys, but, you know, filming about his, you know, because he's again trying to take out, he's trying to like take his anger out on WWE while saying that, you know, they're not pushing him right and stuff like that. And it's an injustice and stuff like that, you know, but yeah, I mean, in terms of my prediction, I hope that uh, KO wins. I'm predicting Kevin Owens to beat Sami Zayn. Uh, here at Mania, but I hope this can be a good match. But I just think with Logan Paul being involved, it's again, it's going to hurt the match for me because I think you know you could have done without him in this whole thing with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. 
But I hope that Kevin Owens takes a dive off the pirate ship like he's been trying to hint at, which could be funny. I like I want him <laughs> to do like a crazy spot like last year, but oh, yeah. Not at the very top of the pirate ship, but you know. Yeah. Who's gonna win it? I'll say Kevin Owens. Okay. So we'll go on to the next match, Riddle versus Sheamus. Do I dare? I want to cover this match. Sheamus, uh, I'm not being funny. You do. It's mad that Vince is giving Sheamus to elevate Matt, Matt Riddle or Riddle, whatever you want to class him as, and all he's been doing is stoner promos. He's stoner. just a, that's what it reminds me of. He was talking about grinding and munches. <laughs> he's in code, and he's getting away with that shit. And I'm like, this is a PG <laughs> market. You're pushing it. <laughs> Drugs, kids. Don't forget, he's in the drugs. wrong era. Wouldn't he be perfect for the Attitude <laughs> Era? He's just a cheap knockoff of uh, Steve-O from Jackass. Uh, oh. So, I victory on this one. Our, our, uh, riddle. That'd be nice. I still want to yeah. see that match happen. Lifetime. Yeah. I know we're rushing through this one because it's just pointless. Gary says Riddle. I say Riddle. What do you say? Uh, uh, I, I say Riddle as well, yeah. Yeah, so we'll move on to the last match, which you'll be all grateful for because you've stuck us this long, or you probably all fell asleep. <laughs> Other than obviously the uh, participants, obviously on this podcast, and um, we've actually got the Nia <laughs> Jackson Shayna versus your picks of the women's tag team match from the night one. So, do you think your picks are going to win it, or you think they're going to retain? Over to Cameron. Uh, yeah, I think, you know what, I think, yes, I think Naomi and Lana are going to win and beat Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax because I, I said this, you know, again, just briefly again from last night that I think, you know, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax now have been, you know, dominating the women's tag team division now. And I know that the women's division's not been great recently, that the tag team division and that the women's division has been pretty, you know, poor. Um, but yeah, like I definitely think like they just need to refresh things. Also, that I think they're teasing more dissension between Shayna and Nia as well, uh, a little bit with Reginald being with Nia and as well being just thrown into this whole thing with Nia and Shayna as well, um, which really again hurted again the, the build up for Sasha and Bianca as well. But um, but yeah, so. I'm going to say Lana and Naomi are going to win because I think that, again, like it would be cool. I think that, that the fans would like that as well. And uh, I just, I'm just over Shayna and Nia at the moment. So, yeah. Over to you, Gary. Yeah. Um, so I do have Lana and Naomi beating Shayna and Nia. I feel that, you know, with, the, with how uh, the world title match is going to go. They're going to shake things up entirely by having Nia and Shayna lose. They could have a program against each other and it could create some interesting matches for the chase for the women's, you know, uh, the red, the red title. It sound like stardom here for a second for the red title. <laughs> and also, uh, there's been a big rumor that Ronda Rousey is going to come back. So that's going to be no. interesting to see. Really? Yeah. See if her and Shayna could, have a match. That's that's what we really want. We want Shayna against Ronda, and in my yeah. heart, I really want Ronda to have one of the titles. So, I mean, not not Ronda. Uh, I really want Shayna Baszler to have one of the titles. So, um, I, I love yeah. Shayna Baszler. I love her. I'm very very high on her. Yeah, and it's scary to think that she's actually older than Beth Phoenix. That is just know, right? insane when I. I know when I yeah. actually saw the statistics. Well, I, like, when I like people Shana, say, but I don't like her with Nia, though. No, that's what I mean. I want them to break up because I don't want them as a tag team anymore. Yeah, yeah. And, and fun fact, when you asked, well, Beth Phoenix is from Buffalo. Fact, oh, yeah, she is, isn't she? Buffalo, she's from Beth Phoenix. Buffalo, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I mean. It's like when I watched the documentary, I enjoyed it. But it's like... With this match, I want my pick to win it. Um, Natalia and Smina Snuka to win it because you, they haven't got nothing else to do. No disrespect no. to them. 
But it's like True. you've got two uh, legacy characters there. They can finish it off one legacy character of how many legacies that's been with Shayna Baszler. But I just feel that uh, Natalia and Tamina is going to get this. I think that course has come to an end. So, you know. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's just, it's like with obviously when you said about the rumours of Ronda Rousey coming back, there's rumours about Becky Lynch coming back as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. But will she though? She's like in awe with her daughter mm. rocks. So wow. who knows? Mm. But it's anyway, hard to say. Yeah. yeah, I thought this has been a long show to actually do for the listeners, let alone the people that have actually been here. I just want to thank once again to all my participants. Yeah, have one more match. What's that? We have one more match. Uh, the SmackDown men's title. Do we? I feel like no. the Street Profits are going to win. They're gonna win when the title's back. That's oh. not even. That's actually not on Wikipedia. So when was that? And that was yeah, it. Was saw... that a t- on SmackDown? There was that a taping? Oh, I'm not sure. I thought I seen it on CBS Sports. So. Uh... Oh, okay. Right. Who, who's the match again? Sorry. It's a uh, Rude and Ziggler against the Street Profits. Okay. Well, I'll say Street Profits as well on that because I think Rude and Sigler will probably lose. I think at this point, like, you know, they've not really been doing a lot recently. So, same. How are you thinking he's going to go down, Gary? Gary? Um, I say Street Profits. All right, okay. Because. Earlier on, it broke up, so I couldn't quite hear you. That's why, my bad. So, but is there any more matches? No, or no, no. We no. die on the microphone. <laughs> there is Andre the Giant Royal Battle Royal tomorrow. Oh, God. Don't even get me started on that. I'm glad that's <laughs> even on the card. I don't want to get onto that one because no. you've just tarnished what you've actually built up for a pre show match. Yeah. God forbid if there is any pre-show matches decided. But it's been a pleasure with you, uh, Gary. Thank you ever so much for coming on, as well as you, Cameron. And obviously, Brian, I know I can't thank him enough for coming on. And you can tell he enjoyed himself, but Din Din's came first. You know, you got to eat, you got to survive, you got to drink, keep hydrated, etc. <laughs> but it's yeah. been a pleasure. Well, watch watching- it. And sanitize, <laughs> wear a mask, we know, <laughs> social distance. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's been a blast with you guys. But anyway, you guys, awesome. we're we're actually off now. I'm off to watch on the WWE Network. On the WWE Network, I can brag. I'm going to be <laughs> watching no other than TakeOver Night 2. I'm looking forward to watching that. But, yeah. I am watching well, good luck for staying talking. up for that. Yeah. <laughs> I will do, but I've got to edit this first and then I'll backtrack it and then I've got to film my review for that one and upload that to YouTube. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but anyway, guys, it's been a blast. Hopefully, we'll do this again on the next pay-per-view, whatever one that comes our way. Or I just hope videos. that's all I just want. Just I just hope that, you know, it, it goes all right, but... Yeah, but I hope the people that have wasted all that money to go to America or in America... Enjoy themselves, <laughs> get pissed, get nice. wankered, enjoy yourself. But until next time, guys, yep. catch you guys soon. <laughs>